McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, Three, two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is February 23rd, 2022. Let's get wild. Wednesday begins right now. 
Wow. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. Day two of the 2022 NFL season for PMS Live. That is this show is officially started. Big time show today. Big time mm-hmm. show. We got Sham mm-hmm. Sharania stopping. Okay. Hey. Sham's friend of the show, obviously a man who won the trade deadline in the NBA. Mm-hmm. I think it's time for us to get updated on what's going on in that that sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think about you're right. Time. Every Acted time awesome. Shams comes on, I ask him every question that I need to figure out what the fuck is happening in the NBA, what's going on right now, and what I can look forward to. He is always fantastic. I do believe he was the one that broke the Harden Simmons trade that everybody was skeptical against, and it shut down the NBA. Basically, he's. Uh, I can't wait to chat with him. I miss him actually. I know yeah, it's been Shams a while. Is the best. So Shams one of the only guys that I've like uh, had scheduled to be on the show, then had time thing, didn't come on the show, couldn't come on the show, did it again, couldn't come on the show again mm-hmm. because of a time commitment thing. Only guy that I've uh, like continued to reach out to, you know, because normally if I reach out to somebody and they come on the show and then they back out of coming on the show, it's like, all right. Then if I reach out to him again, then they say they're coming on the show and they back out to come on the show. I'm like, all right, I'm not doing this again. Like, I understand. Like, mm-hmm. and they're probably trying to tell me something. Shams, though, is working his ass off mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Shams is in a grind mode right now. Yeah. And I'm so thankful he's taking time to chat with us and uh, smarten us up in the NBA world. Because what is going on? Are we near the playoffs yet? Post yeah. All-Star break, so it's supposed to start heating up now, start, right? Game this start is back tomorrow. Oh, yeah, this one we're so, hey, we're supposed to care about that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. In two months. Like oh, 20 football games. stopped. Perfect timing. Mm-hmm. The MLS starts Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't okay, wait. the NBA is happening. College Why? basketball is taking place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shams doesn't know anything about any of that, but he does know the NBA, so we'll chat with him. Lost 5,000 last night on Michigan State, getting blown out by <clears throat> Iowa. Thank oh, you. Oh, no. Jersey retirement. Thank you, fucking yeah. Evan Fox. They might stink. Jersey retirement. Uh, Michael Lomb- uh, Lombardi will join us also in the second hour. Cannot wait to chat with him. About, you know, right now, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, franchise tags were being able to be delivered starting yesterday all the way through March 8th. The league year starts March 16th. There's salary cap gymnastics happening. The Packers have already done it. They were like $30 million, uh, over the cap or a projected cap. They redid Kenny Clark's con- uh, contract deed tackle for them with two voidable years at the end of this thing. Saved themselves $10 million, so now they're only mm-hmm. $20 million over the cap. And once again, this goes to show uh, this reporting is via Field. Yeah, shout out to Field, by the Thank way. Thank you, Field. They converted $13.615 million of Clark's 2022 compensation into a signing bonus and added two void years to his deal. So then they, they added to a signing bonus. The signing bonus then gets distributed amongst the entire contract. So this was a move Tom Brady did with the Patriots so many times. He would take yeah. his yearly salary, they would turn it into a signing bonus before the season. Then that number, instead of hitting for the one-year salary, it would be scattered amongst the years in which the entire contract is. Then people started gaming the entire system. All right, we're going to do a 10-year deal with eight voidable years, but the voidable years are opt-outs that won't be figured out till later. We'll turn this contract into a signing bonus contract, then we'll scatter it amongst the 10. Now, nobody's done 10 years, but they've done four, five, and six. But I'm just saying for the sake of the uh, explanation of why the salary cap does not matter. So then they take that one-year salary, they put it in the signing bonus, so the player's still getting his money, then they scatter it throughout the entire years, so then they save all this fucking money, basically. That's why you add the voidable years at the end because then that contract is now cut into fourths basically or fifths depending upon how many years you extend that thing which leads us to the next point that nothing matters in the salary cap conversation Mm -hmm. now that that has been figured out so you have to remember that whenever you're thinking about your team oh can we afford this guy can we afford this guy the answer is yes you can afford whoever, whenever, however. That is just what everybody needs to understand with the modern NFL. Will the NFL adjust to that and make rules so that can't take place? Probably. There will be an adaptation somewhere of these owners that don't want to spend all this money or aren't maybe in desirable cities that have either good tax benefits or good weather or anything like that where you're seeing a lot of OGs kind of travel to. So there's going to be people that are pissed off that can't play the system as well as everybody else. There will be a change. But until that time comes, probably a couple years, right now the salary cap means absolutely nothing and it's only going up so you should remember that whenever we put up how much space a team has going into free agency and we say oh they got 62 million they got 57 million at LA for the Chargers and the Jags got 56 and the Bengals got 48 and then you look at the bottom five you're like the Saints have negative 70 some million the Packers now have negative 30 something because of the 10 million they just saved on the Kenny Clark thing Cowboys 21 million over the cap Vikings Rams all these teams that are over the cap none of that means shit no None of it means anything because they can set up contracts to mean 
anything they wanted to, which leads us to the next point. Yesterday, the Kenny Clark deal, obviously, mm -hmm. the Packers have to do that mm -hmm. before, I think, next month. But also, if they want to sign or keep anybody, they have to make space to do that whole thing. Right. So they're making those moves. The fact that the Packers are doing the voidable year trick, which is what Tampa did, Kansas City did, L.A. did, like uh, the Saints did, like the fact that Green Bay is starting to do it, this is huge for modern times. Yeah. Yeah. For this, the Green Bay Packers kind of changing, evolving, and hopefully having a blueprint to how they can kind of keep everybody on the team in which, you know, it sounds like, Probably, maybe, going to have Aaron Rodgers. And it sounds like he's in a much better spot after yesterday's conversation at Ty Schmidt, uh, shareholder of the Green Bay Packers. you got to love seeing them do this type of deal because although it's just Kenny Clark, the thought of adding the voidable years and turning it into salary cap, it's like, welcome to the game, right? That's that's kind of what right. we're hoping everybody starts doing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, you see all the other teams doing the voidable years thing, and we'd talk about it, and it was kind of just – like an expectation, like, oh, the Packers don't operate that way. They're not going to do that. But I think this obviously bodes very well for the fact that it's like, hey, it might only be two years that we have with Rodgers or whatever, but we're we're going to, you know, I mean, they, they went all in last year, but they're going to do it again. They realize, like, hey, our best opportunity to win a Super Bowl with how well this guy's playing is right now within these next few years. So let's let's kick the can down the road four or five years or whatever and, and kind of retain our core. And it's interesting because Green Bay doesn't have an owner. Right. And they make $250 million a year in real estate. Mm -hmm. huh. Remember we saw that. Oh, yeah. And investments? And that all money, yeah, and investments in real <laughs> yeah. estate and however it is. And that money just goes into a fund. Mm -hmm. So you don't fully understand why they wouldn't operate that way other than the fact that, you know, they are the keepers of the Packers organization. Like, hey, this is a legendary thing. We have, the, this is how we operate. This is what the Packers are. We're one of the original teams. I mean, NFL film is basically on this guy. Right. So I feel like that is a thing that Mark and Gutekunst and all them, the keepers of the Packers, I feel like. Yeah. But the ad, you know, adapting to the modern time and making moves. I think is not a bad thing for the Packers organization. And we've heard other GMs, whether it's off air through like sources or whatever, talk about how this isn't a sustainable winning uh, model to kick things down the road because it's going to show up when it shows up. It's going to show up when it shows up. It's like, well, feels like all the teams that are winning are fucking. Yeah. <laughs> feels like all the teams that are winning are doing. This is back whenever I was a kid. Grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dudes, what? What's up? What? At Nick Marauder. Congrats on the engagement. What's up? What's up? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Basically, every Italian in America with some sort of has some sort of tie to Pittsburgh. So, sure. how's the family? Everybody, mm -hmm. what's up? But the Pirates stunk. Okay, yeah. Pittsburgh Pirates stunk. Still do. Still do. Always will with this bum ass owner that they got. Mm -hmm. right now. Okay, sell the fucking team. Not to us, but somebody should be able to buy that team. That matters. But I would watch. You know, at night there was. Uh, you know, I'd watch the Lakers at night because I couldn't sleep. And then when baseball was happening, there was this one team that was always around. Okay, and then you watch the Frank Abagnale uh, in the Catch Me If You Can, mm -hmm. and his dad says, uh, "You know why the Yankees always win? Because they're too busy staring at the pinstripe." Like the Yankees were always a thing. So during baseball playoff time, it was like, "All right, the Yankees are going to be here. I would like to see this team win." And then you start hearing all the baseball purists say, "Well, they cheat. They spend more money than everybody." It's like, well, that sounds like a team that wants to win more than everybody yeah. else. In my eyes, personally, as a competitive human, that sounds like somebody that wants to win more. It feels like the teams that are doing this are the teams that want to win more right now. And I understand there's thinking ahead, but allegedly through all these sources, a lot of these GMs don't want to do it because they don't think it's the right way to operate. They think it will catch up to you. I don't think it will. I don't think it at all, which leads me to this point. The fact that the Patriots have been... Oh, I know. You know, I know. they started right. this signing uh, bonus stuff way back. Now, yeah. the voidable years and all that, so you got to give credit to Belichick being able to game the system for all those years with Tom Brady taking those pay cuts, which weren't pay cuts. There's, well, he wasn't getting paid as much as he should. Okay, but he would turn his contract into signing bonuses, and everybody like, well, he's taking less, but actually he's getting his money up front. Yeah. yeah. It's actually almost a better deal for right. him, but they've been gaming the system for a long time because Tom Brady would allow them to do such. Now Mac Jones on a rookie contract, so they're still able to do it. How will they be able to do it going forward? I think we'll all be intrigued to see what Bill Belichick does with that once they have to pay Mac Jones. Um, but how come you guys force everybody out whenever you can it's pay crazy. everybody if you wanted to? Robert Kraft has all the money in the world. He owns the entire Foxborough town, basically. Yeah. Yeah. He has a casino. He's got Patriot Play. Sure. He's got, obviously, John Bon Jovi's what? concert revenue. In right. there. I think he's an investor in Fanatics, which is doing very uh -huh. well. He has some paper company, I think, that he came from. Let alone, every, he has all this money. He would spend the money, would he not? Absolutely. So how come Bill Belichick isn't doing this whole game? He's a guy who 
games the system. Mm -hmm. Like, why everybody has so much respect. How come it always comes, Stephon Gilmore, get the fuck out of town. We don't want to pay you. Sure. J.C. Jackson now, it sounds like, get the fuck out of town. We don't wow. want to pay you. What do you think it is? Do you think that it's just like, this is how Bill Belichick operates? Why do you think J.C. Jackson publicly came out and said, obviously they don't care about me. That's This is a crazy quote. Insane. This, this is an insane quote mm -hmm. to hear from J.C. Jackson. Mr. Interception, absolute lockdown stud for the Patriots in Bill Belichick's defense, in which there's no defensive coordinator. Nope. Right? Bill Belichick probably pretty hands-on in this particular department. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't be that important to them. They're not showing me. I don't know how this was taken. I, I didn't listen to the full interview. But the fact that this came out of his mouth, very interesting. You would think normally, like, uh, Team 3 would say these mm -hmm. types of things, like right. what happens and Russell, but why does this continue to happen? You think up there in New England, Connor? Salary cap's not real. What no, the hell? it's not. Has all the money in the world. You got a rookie contract. Sure. Why does this continue to happen? I mean, with JC, you know, we were working on an extension, and when I say we, I mean me, Bill, and all the guys in the Patriots <laughs> sure. front office. Steve, during, during, yeah, Steve, sure, John Mayo. So during the season, they tried to get it done last year. Obviously, didn't happen. Now, franchise tag starts on Tuesday. He said to uh, Phil Perry on. NBC Sports Boston, like, hey, uh, you know, look, I, they haven't reached out. I don't know. I guess they don't like me. So that is, it's really not out of context, that quote uh, as a whole. But look, Bo Belichick's at West Bumfuck University right now at some pro day for some <laughs> D3 guy you've never heard of. Sorry, you know, our head coach is also our GM. Sorry about it. Sorry about <laughs> it. Okay, look, he's got multiple jobs. He can't be, you know, concerning himself with a networking. franchise tag networking when, you know, he knows, okay, I got to get that done by March 8th. Realistically, just like Rapsheed said about how the Patriots really take their time in hiring coaches, they really take their time in placing the franchise tag too. JC Jackson's gonna get the tag next year when the salary cap goes up twenty million more and Mac Jones is still on that rookie contract. Then JC will get his big bag. It's awesome to think about though that Bill Belichick's running all this shit. So like when other GMs have like, Hey, uh, need you to talk to this guy's agent, kinda let them know where we're at or whatever, Bill Belichick Checks like, hey, Matt Patricia, we got to get in a bus, South Harmon Institute Technology. Boom. There's a fucking three technique down there yeah. that yeah. we think we could add to this, Steve. Let them know we will get, hey, we'll, we'll fucking get to you. Yeah. And then JC's like, oh, you'll get to me, huh? You got to mm -hmm. travel to South Harmon Institute <laughs> of Technology. You don't like me, huh? What's that all about? It's an interesting dynamic. It's a very, very interesting dynamic, but there's only one Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's going to be multiple people that are going to try to have that type of role. And I think there's obviously some drawbacks. Those types of drawbacks, though, if you haven't won six Super Bowls, exactly, going to be tough to get past for yeah. all the players, the agents, yeah. everybody. Hey, fuck you, fuck you. That's why whenever everybody comes from the Belichick tree mm -hmm. and you try to do the same thing, it's like you don't have the resume, mm -hmm. okay, to do what this guy did. And in 2022, it's really hard for people to continue to be like, you know what, you're right, you're a fucking asshole. We're losing. I'm going to continue to do this. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to continue to do that in the world that we're in. At Tone Diggs, you got to be pumped though that the Steelers. They never concern themselves with any of this drama. Ain't that right? Never. Mm. Never. The salary cap thing. You think the Steelers will ever become a team that does that? Because not notoriously known to pay anybody in yeah. Pittsburgh. They, hire from within. They pay guys who have come up, who they draft. Like, they've, they've never gone out. Which, by the way, honorable. Yeah, smart. Yeah, big time. Remember we talked to Chris Ballard. Chris Ballard yeah. said, like, uh, our guys need to know that when they come here, if you play well, you're going to get paid, mm -hmm. which is a big thing for recruiting free agents and stuff like that. But the whole manipulating the salary cap, I don't know if the Steelers will ever, ever be a part of it. So for the first time I can remember in my life, they're actually 30 million over the cap. Normally they're like 30 million under, or sorry, they're 30 million under the cap. Normally they're about 30 million over the cap. They're sitting like where the Packers are right now normally. So they either have to do stuff like that where they do this, the salary cap gymnastics or they have to let guys go that they can't keep to pay or whatever. But the, So this is the first time ever that they have a chance to actually potentially go out and sign guys because they don't have to do all this where they have to cut guys to get under the cap. So I'm interested to see, like, if the, will they go out and, like, fix the O-line potentially this offseason? Like, the Browns did a few years ago. They signed three guys who became Pro Bowlers. Well, I so, seen like, to my uh, – no, no, that was another place, I guess. Listen. Laramie Tunsil is getting recruited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, big time. Cincy. Laramie, Cincy was recruiting him, yeah. Well, every, or Mike Hilton was. I love that there is – now we're in the realm of people can go anywhere. Yeah. Like Jarvis Landry. Yeah. All of, all of a sudden, in my head, it was like Jarvis Landry next year, definitely a Brown. And then he puts out his tweet. You kind of look in the situation. It's like, oh, the amount of money they could potentially save 
with him not being there, and they're going to go through the run game, and Jarvis seems to be okay with going elsewhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit, Jarvis Landry might be on the. Sure, that's um, a hell of a play. Yeah. Laramie Tunzel on the move. Like there is, who knows how many other players are going to potentially be like, you know what? Yeah, I think I would like to move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if any of it will happen, but it feels like we're getting to a closer point of that maybe becoming a reality for around the entire Dirty's NFL. working on a uh, free agent graphic out there and completely forgot Stefan Gilmore, now a free agent since oh, he yeah. just went to the Yeah, let's Panthers look at the left. top 15 free agents and shout out to uh, Dirty for putting this thing together. Look at the binoculars up on top. You know, oh, watch. Oh, like free that. agency Scotland. watch. Yep. Yeah. And this is uh, via Pro Football Focus. Shout out to Chris Collinsworth. Ari Mirov and the boys over there. Okay. Mm-hmm. My sports update, by the way. Hustle. Guys, yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. Weapon. Nice guy. Yeah. Very, nice guy. Very, Very nice, nice guy. guy. That was the cool thing about Super Bowl week. We got to meet all these people. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Ari had helped out our show immensely with mm-hmm. his tweets, so we appreciate him. But via Pro Football Focus, the top 15 free agents, Devontae Adams, which a lot of people, after what Aaron said yesterday, I guess the take was... Well, if Aaron's not going back, why would you even tag Devontae then? If that's going to be like, because he's, he's really good. He's yeah. fucking like best, best receiver in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jordan Love. It, it, not even, whoever is throwing yeah. the football. Yeah. Right. There is probably it's probably better to have the best guy. But they were saying something about saving money. If you're not going to have Aaron, why would you have Devontae? I don't know how that came out of that conversation yesterday because it sounded like Aaron understood that the tag could happen. Neither side wants that to happen. They want the long term with avoidable years. Is almost Aaron almost described what he thought mm-hmm. that contract would look like with Devontae. And then in turn, somehow, I guess, uh, the, ways, the way people can hear the same thing and then just get mm-hmm. completely polar different th- is wild. Insane. I guess that's like human psychology. I don't know how that works. But I, I feel like Devontae, there's no way he leaves. No. There's no way he leaves. I, right? I've always viewed it as if Rodgers is back, Devontae is back. And even if Rodgers were to leave or retire, whatever, I, don't, I can't. I can't imagine that the Packers wouldn't at least franchise him for one more year. I think it is possible too that like they could franchise him what by the eighth and then work on yes. doing yeah. a, a long term deal. Like so, he might he might get franchise tag. But I I never once thought going into the off season like oh there's you know Devontae is probably not going to be playing for the Packers because I've just assumed that if Rodgers goes back he's going to be there too. And we can indicate the you know the aggression of the Packers front office whenever they do this Kenny Clark deal where they save right. an amount of money and they do the avoidable things. It's like, I think the Packers are actually maybe going to do some shit. Yeah, I think it's possible. Which is really cool, by the way, which you would have to say that that probably is because of what happened between them and Aaron last offseason. Yeah, yeah it has oh, to be. Yeah. Has I would to be. assume that, well, that, is, that is why that is the case. And then if... If they if they are super aggressive and they do everything, it's like well then why would Aaron even think about potentially going somewhere? You know, it's like a very interesting holes. Like I think we'll look at this later, looking back on how this whole thing happened. Because instead of Peyton or Tom or Matthew, like what if they do just like yeah, actually let's just fix this thing right here and they continue to go on to have like act, like win a Super Bowl or two. It's like that'd be that kind of debunk a lot of theories about people just leaving and have success. Well, and I think after seeing what the Rams just did, it's like okay, hey, like guess what? We don't know what's after Rodgers. Like there's a very good chance that whoever comes here and plays quarterback next isn't going to be as fucking good as this guy is. So we need to maximize. Like I think a lot of Packers fans they've won they've went to the playoffs so many times won the division so many times like i think you would trade off kind of selling out going all in right now winning a super bowl and then maybe being mediocre for the next five years like i think that's that's an equal trade-off all you want to do is win a super bowl exactly yeah. that, exactly only thing matters especially when you've won the division you know how many times and went to the nfc championship it's like that shit doesn't matter anymore 31 teams are having a conversation about how, how do we win super bowl next year yeah. mm-hmm. you know that's that's so if you don't make the playoffs like Clanton happened with the Colts, like right. you want a Super Bowl next year, nobody gives a fuck. Crazy. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like it does not matter at all. Did the parade happen? Yes. Okay. The other top 15, uh, Armstead down there, his contract potential, 60 million. Godwin, oh, Godwin's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Godwin's gonna get signed so, uh-huh. now coming off an injury, which is tough, but I think he played through a bunch of injuries and everybody has massive amount of respect mm-hmm. for Godwin, I think, in the NFL. He's gonna get signed somewhere with maybe some people who have money. Come to Indianapolis. Sure. Or maybe, mm-hmm. maybe New England. No, come on, Indian. They don't pay anybody in New England. No, don't you worry. They don't pay anybody don't in you New worry. England. We're gonna don't tag him. Yeah. <laughs> Von Miller, I didn't know he was up. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you come to Indy? Come on, Indy, Vaughn. Yeah, LA. Yeah, LA, Indy. Come Indy. on. 
You saw L.A., dude. No, I know. know. We also felt L.A. Yeah, but Vaughn Miller, he fuck with Cowboy, dude. That's he ain't right. worried about just the You're weather right. being right. sunny. True. You're right. Get out of here, dude. And also here in Indy, you don't have to worry about just literally stepping over him and pooping right on the street well, right now. It depends yeah, on where you walk with you. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it depends. <laughs> but also, yeah, there, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there is a decent <laughs> amount. There was, there was. They clean, they clean the, the city up. up yeah. It's the winter, so you don't see as much. Yeah, it's yeah. frozen. Spring, like I sneakers. guess, the poop's back. Yeah. Uh, uh, poop no. sprung. Here we Especially go. May, Indy, May. Uh -huh. uh, May, oh, everybody. Oh, it's going to get dirty. Oh, my God. Get your boots ready. Yeah, should not let Vaughn in the city until at least July. Right. July, August. Mini camp. And Aaron Donald's going to retire if they let Vaughn go, so they can't. Yeah, and they, they've mastered the who gives a fuck about anything other than trying to win a Super Bowl. We'll pay everybody everything. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Our owner, he owns like 17 teams. He was 200% overestimated budget for the stadium yeah. we're currently in that we're sharing with another team. Yeah, don't worry about Spano's family. Just His wife's part of the Walmart family. Like, yeah. They're going to have money. They're going to be okay. Walmart's still doing it, huh? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Crush. They are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're building up. Walmart's building... I mean, new super center? No, factory. Storage, massive yeah. warehouse. Storage is, yeah, out here because I thought it was all oh. Amazon. I was like, oh, Amazon's doing all this so they can store all their shit so they can get things right. overnighted to everybody, you know, because Indianapolis is pretty centrally located to most things. So, <laughs> you know, around Foxy's house, they're just, just a big hub. They're yeah. just building, oh. they're just building For, all these storage. The Walmart one's the biggest one. That's what. Well, I thought it was just Amazon, but no. no, no. There's, I guess there's. I don't know how much we should be giving away, but there's like servers being served no, no. in all these millions. And then Walmart has the fucking biggest one, and it's oh, like, yeah. oh, so Walmart's in this whole game too. What's going on? Unfortunately, in the next like two to three years, Foxy's house is going to be in the middle of one of these WalMarts, like <laughs> Kanye's house yeah. is in the middle of the stadium. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And if you hang on to it, Foxy, I think you'll be able to get a pretty good <laughs> yeah. buck out yeah. of that. Yeah. The biggest house in the office. Jeez. Uh, Big time hold situation. So Walmart. Walmart's still anyways. Cronky will fucking pay. They don't, they, hey, an old buddy wearing the shirt, fuck those pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's awesome. it is awesome. Their PR department's the worst in the NFL, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The Rams. I am on question. They've, they've, they've also, also run out of picks, though, to trade now. No, no, dude, there's always more. Yeah, next 2028. 20, 20, yeah. 29. <laughs> yeah, 2030. I think you're only on a five year margin, I think. Mm -hmm. We, I think we looked into this. So they have zero picks to give up. That's awesome. What a <laughs> Super Bowl. What a Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And next yeah. year, by the way, opens a new five-year window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be a whole other slot of picks. That's right. Coming up next year. Got to sign Vaughn, though. Those right. picks are going to stink anyway. Let's just be honest. Well, I don't know. Well, you start looking at stats, which I know stats, you know, stats are always stats. Stats mm -hmm. play on everybody's team. They yeah. do. Stats, stats plays. Somehow, stats are on everybody's team, and they're always like, the finisher, you know, like, yeah, like the fact they, they were the, yeah. So Brock has the F5 mm -hmm. thing. People have probably seen him do it to a shark. He's done to a lot of humans. People don't sur survive normally. No, you know what I mean? Never. Uh, Goldberg used to spear then Jacket. That was like his finisher. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson had the big time, right? feels like in every argument that big time, right? Is always a stat. Boom. I got it. And then the other person always figures out how to counter with their finisher. And then it's just stats on both sides. But the stats always say, you know, something that makes a narrative better or a, a picture better. And I would like to say I am certainly on the fuck those picks side. Yes. So these stats definitely paint my picture better. There is no chance that you are going to hit on every one of your picks. Mm -hmm. So the fact that some people hang on to these picks like they are gold, and I get it. I understand that they can be, and you can find a diamond in the rough. Stats say, in this particular case, my stats that I could find very quickly and easily. Most of these people you draft in the first round, second round, third round are gonna fucking bust. Mm -hmm. Stat, stats say, the quarterbacks in the first like 15, over the last five, six years, or 10 years maybe I think, just absolute bust, 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 yeah. bust, bust, bust. Not, is it their fault, is it the team's fault, who knows? But if you can get a proven guy, I'm doing that 10 times out of 10, because they know the league, they know how to do their thing, and it's working out for everybody. But to do so, you got to do a lot of salary cap gymnastics. Especially when they're allowing you to trade picks five years from now, and it's like, hey, there's a good chance in three years I'm not going to be coaching here anymore. So yeah. fuck those picks even more. Like, am I even going to get to see the end of when those picks what actually are come up? What are going to do? You know? Nothing. What's your problem? I mean, unless they release Carl. That is at the top of their list. They need to get Russell Wilson. 
They need to do whatever they there can to no get Russell Wilson. There's no way Sierra Wilson. is coming to Indianapolis, Indiana. Make her an offer she can't refuse. All right, there's that house. Have you seen Broad Ripple? It's Hold pretty on. nice. No, have you seen this house? It's half the fucking city. It's oh, awesome. yeah. Got your own <laughs> reservoir. Was it 14 or 17 yeah. million? Or something? Yeah. It's half the city. But that situation feels like the Packers where it's like, hey, instead of letting these guys go, let's keep this in-house, fix it, and then let's go on a run. And You're talking Seahawks? Super. Yes. Instead of letting Russell Instead go somewhere let else, Russell let's do go. it here. Yeah, let's, let's figure out what Russ wants. Mm -hmm. Let's abide by what he wants, and then let's see what we can do. Isn't it crazy to think, like, Doug Peterson and them in Jacksonville are going to have that team believe and they're going to win a Super Bowl? Yeah. yeah. And at some point, we will have to talk about the optimism every single team has. But if history shows us anything, like there's only a couple organizations that really have a shot at winning. They're the ones that are very obviously trying to win right now. I agree. And then the Bengals fucking ruined that. The Bengals were awesome, weren't they? Yeah, but they Bengals. paid a lot of guys, too. Like last free agency was like the first they time they were ever yeah, going yeah, yeah. after people. But, but no, like, also, see, also. Well, I don't have say, to. I don't want to say it. Yeah, of course. But they... They got their quarterback, so like if Trevor Lawrence could be that guy, and then the, the Jags signed a bunch of people. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. They say, you know, and what are they gonna do with all Urban's guys? So yeah. Well, is there a clash of culture there? Because they're living on the edge. Remember, what if Doug Peterson comes in and says, "I want to be elite." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Urban Meyer just dunked on elite all last year. Yeah. Like elite, we're throwing around this word elite too much. Mm -hmm. Is what he said. That that organization owns a company that actually has yeah. elite in it. That's right. <laughs> One of his first things was like, elite stinks. We need to be on the edge. Building a culture, changing a culture, so fascinating. But the quickest way to win, I think, is just bring in goddamn guys that win. And if you have an owner that's willing to do that, it's it's game, set, match. And I guess that's what we got to talk about for like the next month is who's going to spend money. And yeah. 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 And if, I mean, from what it sounds like in Jacksonville, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. If, you you know, Urban was getting laughed out of team meeting rooms and oh, people yeah. were just shitting on him, I think – Doug comes in, he's just a real dude. They'll probably love him right away. I love it. I can't wait to see what the Jags do. Can't wait to see what the Colts do. Oh, well, yeah. Should, Should be too. interesting. I'm excited, excited to see what the Packers do. Mm -hmm. Excited to see where J.C. Jackson goes because they ain't showing him any love. No. <laughs> Sounds like a Sorry. story as old as time. And New England will somehow always win. Uh, let's pivot a little bit to um, – the Basketball Association. Ooh. Okay. This conversation was actually supposed to start a few moments ago, but I guess some maybe some shit yeah. just popped news. off. Oh, breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now, the top basketball insider. There is a scoreboard. There are stats. This dude is on top of the game. Yeah. The incredibly handsome from the Athletic and Stadium Network. Ladies and gentlemen, NBA insider, Sham Sharanya. What up, fellas? Hey, What's new, up? new backdrop. What's going on, man? New year, new you? Yeah, I, I, I got the I got the clear backdrop. I know it looked like I was in a in a spaceship or something, like an alien vortex. But I'm I'm out of there now. I'm 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 in the I'm in I'm in the, my natural habitat. Hell yeah! Uh, Hell yeah. Hey, great to have you back. Let's thank talk you, about. Shelby. You just broke some news, I believe. So thank you for joining us immediately after that. And let's dive right into it. New York City has a plan to phase out the vaccine oh. mandate in the coming weeks. Mayor Eric Adams says at at which point Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving would be cleared for home games. Spokesperson adds that current rules remain in place. This is via Sham Sharania Twitter account, and it's already doing numbers. 1,200, 1,300 retweets, 1,400 retweets. I mean, it is obviously going. The Sham Sharania, Sham's bombs continue. So this is still a thing. We haven't talked to you in a while. Kyrie Irving not being able to play in New York, but playing on the road is still a thing. Obviously, the Nets are a brand new team. We have to dive into that. What are you hearing about this in a couple weeks? Is that good for the timeline of the NBA? It, it, it'll be in a few weeks where there is optimism and even the city is now going to work on lifting the mandate. And so there's been optimism. I was just in Cleveland for All-Star Weekend and there was a we lot of optimism among the league, you know, the, the NBPA. The, the, basically, you know, the, the Nets have been optimistic for quite some time now that the mandate would eventually be lifted uh, during the second half of the season. And now Eric Adams today comes out and says that, yes, that is the plan. That is what the city is going to work on over the next few weeks. I think there's eight or nine games, home games left that Kyrie Irving out of the last 23 games of the season that he's going to be eligible to play. Obviously, all those games on the road. But now there is optimism that hopefully before the month of March is out, Kyrie Irving will be able to step foot on the floor at Barclays Center and play home games and then be, be eligible to play at home during the playoffs when it matters most. I think that's always been the question. That's the question around the league. The next season – changed when they brought back Kyrie Irving in early January and brought him back into the fold. But this moment that he could be brought back for home games could define their season and could define 
the way the NBA championship landscape ends up. Okay, well, thank you for breaking that news. Excited to hear and learn more about that. And you're a basketball insider, not a world insider, but did we beat COVID? Yeah, it feels is like that it. What, is that did, what that means? I mean, listen, uh, Toronto, Washington, um, what? Uh, Boston, what? Philadelphia, what? Chicago. What? It's been on and on of, of, of just uh, – sorry, I'm getting text messages. But it's been – Every single city has been uh, has been lifting their mandate. In New York right. City, Eric Adams have been the last one standing, and so it was to me only a matter of time before this mandate was lifted. And Eric Ad- Adams obviously confirms today that that process is is underway. It's going to be something that's going to take an amount of time. This isn't something that's just going to happen over the next couple of days. Um, obviously, it could, and and that's probably going to be what what would fall in line with what the norms are across the country right now, but. San Francisco, um, you know, Boston, Philadelphia, what? Washington, what? What? Toronto, uh, MLSC, which which uh, oversees the Raptors, uh, you know, announced that beginning March one they've lifted the vaccine requirement. So I would expect, you know, the month of March is going to be a big moment what? for the Nets and and for the city of New York. <laughs> Congrats to all of us, by the way. Congrats to everybody. Congrats, Pat. Congrats. No, congrats to you and congrats, everybody. Congrats, Sean. Congrats, Kyrie. Congrats, Kyrie. information, Sean. We fucking beat COVID. Oh, yeah. Man. Yes. Woo. Thank you for that. I did not expect that from, you know, NBA insider Sean <laughs> Sharanya. But now that we do it, let's talk about the net. What text are you getting? Is there anything big? Is there any other mandates no being lifted? I'm, I'm checking right now. Let me see. Let me see if I can open this desk. What if he just breaks uh, news? He does. He just shits and breaks yeah. news. Yeah. I bet it's Rapture asking him to get a beer or something. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. Hey, not are yet. you just a booze oh, hound too? But we we got plenty to talk about, Pat. So okay, all right, let's dive into it. Sorry, Rap Sheet told us yesterday that basically the way he gets his network and his insiders, he just goes and gets drunk with everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's always drinking. He has a little bit of an addiction issue, I think, to alcohol, but it's gotten him far in his life, so he's never going to stop. <laughs> Did you guys get him on the record on what drink choice he prefers? Uh, if, if you got, we got whatever's to close. Yeah. Come on, Pat. He drinks everything. I mean, it was blue margarita as soon as he landed in uh-huh. L.A. Yeah. Then, it, like yesterday, it was oh, beer, lime. What? Then he talks about tequila. What? Troy Aikman's eight beer. What? Stella. Then he's got Stella or Twilight. Yeah, I what? mean, he literally does not. You know, he's like the white dude in, um, I think it's Cat. Uh, wait. Like the oh yeah yeah, yeah yep. we're here to get fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like that I think that is Ian Rapport. He's like hey listen we're here to get we're here to get sources. Yeah, <laughs> who wants a beer, tequila, vodka, whiskey? Right. What? Who right. needs it? That's kind of what Rapport's doing. Is that how it is in the association? Is that what you're doing <laughs> to get all your insider information? Um, I, I can't say that I get I get drunk with my sources. No, so we you know well, I, that's I think that's time. where yeah. I have a lot of respect for Ian. That's my guy, but I, I that that's where we kind of differ. I don't I don't I don't typically go that route. Well, I mean it's good for your liver, good for your soul. I mean I guess there's more <laughs> than one way to get your information. Let's talk about the information you had though before everybody else. Ben Simmons, you're in front of this. We were talking to you about Ben Simmons while I think you were the only person with any information about Ben Simmons. He was obviously with the Sixers. Something happened. He didn't like anybody. Nobody liked him. He wasn't practicing. He was there. Mental health wasn't all the way ready to play. Everybody was thinking it was just a dying situation because the Sixers said, we're not going to move him. Then you reported Harden is actually available for trade from the Nets because he hated. I don't know. If, did he hate Brooklyn? Whatever. I don't know what, how that whole thing happened. But then they inevitably trade. You break the news. That is huge. Right, that that was big time news in the NBA. I thought Harden and Kevin Durant were boys. I thought there was no way he would leave. I thought nobody wanted Ben Simmons. Now it seems like everybody's happy. Is that the case? Uh, I mean, both teams got exactly what they wanted. Philadelphia has wanted James Harden this this entire season. That's been their game plan. I had actually reported a few weeks even before the trade that Daryl Morey and Philadelphia were going to wait for the off season. We're going to sit on Ben Simmons until the off season where they can go and pursue James Harden. But that moment came a lot quicker than they expected, than anyone around the league expected, because uh, James Harden began to check out of Brooklyn. That's that's just the the why. The, what the happened? Fact of the matter. I, I think I think there were several things. You know, James Harden came out and said that the inconsistency of Kyrie Irving being available for for only road games and being a part time player. I think that was mm. something that he admitted had an impact on the team. So that's maybe one thing. But also even beyond that is the style of play. And when James Harden's on the floor. You know he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. There's a there's a Houston Rockets style of basketball that he likes to play, where the ball is going to be in his hand. While there are other people, Steve Nash, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, other members of that locker room that want a more free 
flowing style. And I had I had some sources close to the coaching staff tell me that we have a totally different game plan when James Harden is on the floor than when he's not on the floor. And so that is not a conducive uh, environment to play with. And, and at, at, at the point when James Harden scores four points in Sacramento, sits the next two games um, that the Nets have, th- th- there was real belief that he had checked out. And so when you have a player of that magnitude – that is not there mentally and and wants to move on. And clearly, you have a trade suitor in Philadelphia, and the, and the Nets got a great package. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, two first-round draft picks. That's, to me, that fills all their needs. You know, they had a need for a big. They wanted Ben Simmons last year uh, before they made the trade for James Harden. They would have willingly taken Ben Simmons, but James Harden gets traded to them. So, uh, they get a big man in Andre Drummond. They get a shooter in Seth Curry with Joe Harris on, on the fence, and it's unclear whether Joe Harris will be back this season. So uh, for the Nets, that was a trade that they had to make. Both sides had to make it. But, Pat, we don't usually in the NBA see blockbusters of this type. These are usually deals that are made for the offseason when uh. players you know, can begin to ask out, can begin to find new homes. Uh, it's very rare when a player of that magnitude asks out in season, gets his wish within – you know, matter of a couple weeks. Well, congrats to everybody over here. Yeah, yeah good work, everybody. Congrats to everybody over here. And congrats to you on breaking that news. Really, baby that was really good, Shams. Hi, baby Shams. Hi, baby Shams. Hi, baby Shams. Let's talk about somebody who needs to ask out. Is Zion just trying not to play for the Pelicans? J.J. Redick, who we have mm-hmm. massive amount of respect for. He is... As do I. J.J. does a great job. And, and you know, I think when he speaks, he speaks from a position of... of People understand he's speaking from a position of having information and having knowledge, and he's not a guy that's just going to be there for the hot take. So I have a lot of respect for J.J. By the way, it felt like that's how the entire internet reacted yesterday Mm -hmm. when they were like, hey, J.J. doesn't just say shit to say shit. And I, by the way, we as people who are fans of his – Agree. So whenever we heard him say this, especially because we asked him about Zion, you know, because they're both Duke guys, he was in New Orleans with them, and I think he, I don't, I don't remember his exact answer, but I didn't feel as if there was any, you know, potential standoffish. I think he was just so distraught and disgusted by the fact that you're the star of this team. They trade in a big time name to your squad, which CJ McCollum is, right? That's a big time. Mm-hmm. That's a yeah. big time name to your squad, and you don't even reach out. Like he, I feel like JJ was so disgusted by the lack of professionalism from Zion there. So that's why he kind of said that entire. Is that an, a narrative that everybody has? And what is going on? Is he going to play ever again? What, what do we ever? Man, I love Zion. What is going yeah, on? Is he yeah. dead? Uh, listen, I, I've I've come on the show and I've said that there there's it's always been in the interest of the Pelicans and it should be in the interest of Zion Williamson to try to find a way back on the floor because at the end of the day, yeah. they need to find out what this team is. They got CJ McCollum. That's a guy that should help this team get to the next level. And their goal now is to make the playoffs. And they're right there. Even though they haven't had Zion Williamson all year and they got off to a, a rough, rough start, but Willie Green has turned the turn the ship around and they're a team that's fighting for a play in spot. And so it, it only benefits Zion Williamson to get back in the fold here. And even a bigger thing guys is he's eligible for a max contract extension in the off season. I think in somewhere in the neighborhood of 180 million, maybe even more. And so the fact that, Give him the money. you know, yeah, is he going to get that, that off? I mean, I, I think that's career. a very Double viable level. question to ask given <laughs> he hasn't played all season. And so, it's in the Pelicans' interest to see him get back on the floor and to see if he can be a guy that they can, you know, agree and commit all that money to. And so, uh, but I, I haven't gotten any sense that Zion Williamson is going to play this season, and I think that definitely is, is alarming. And does he and, not and, want and to? You until, think, you think you he know, wants for, to move? You think he wants to move? His t- his family wants him out of there. What do you think? Like you think they don't want the max contract in New Orleans? Maybe. I, I don't know the answer to that, but listen, I've done reporting and I've come on this show, Pat, and, and spoken about it. There's His family has made it clear at different points over his career so far in New Orleans that they prefer him to see, prefer to see him elsewhere. And that could just be normal day-to-day frustration and, and families and people around these players can tend to get frustrated at different points. But that was a consistent theme and a consistent message of last season. And that was the season Zion Williamson was mostly healthy. He did miss time. He had a hand injury. Um, and and he, he did miss some time, but overall he did make an all-star team. He put up amazing numbers. When he's on the floor Everything and healthy, he puts up yeah. sick numbers. I mean, he does video game stuff, over 60% field goal percent, yeah. 20, I think 27 points, 10 Ooh. rebounds a game. Yeah. The guy is a beast when no, he's, he's on the floor. He's not that guy anymore. The question is how do you get him back yes. on the floor? How do you get him reconditioned? And I think that's something 
New Orleans is trying to find. So did the Pelicans bring in C.J. McCollum to kind of, like, dispel the rumors that they're not trying to win? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I think they were always trying to win. Oh, where they are they? Oh, wow. where are they? Oh, where are they? Come on. I think that the plan has always been to try to win in New Orleans, but they just haven't, at the end of the day, they haven't been able to put the right pieces together. And last year, Pat, they went out and they tried to get Kyle Lowry. They tried to get Lowry. a top a top flight free agent point guard. Lowry. And it did not happen. And they ended up getting Devontae Graham, who has been a nice fit there. But CJ McCollum is more along the lines of the type of player that the Pelicans were trying to get last offseason. Okay, well, congrats to the Pelicans. Let's hope Zion gets back. Here we go, pals. Okay. Good uh, luck. Last question for me before the boys have some. And Shams, we appreciate you joining us. I know there's always news to be broke. So the fact that you're sitting down with us, we appreciate it. Because you're, you're not in your spaceship anymore, but you are always tuned into your phones. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, like the. Seems like there's a reality TV program happening over there in L.A. with yep. the Lakers. You know, it seems like, and I'm just reading from what you guys are reporting. I'm outside looking in. Don't know basketball well enough. All I do know is in high school, I seen LeBron James. His team came and played an all-star team from Pennsylvania. LeBron dunked from the foul line on maybe the best player in Pennsylvania. I think he was a junior or something like that. I've seen it. And this guy has only— It wasn't on you, right? No, no, I didn't make that team. I didn't put, no, no. No, <laughs> no, I didn't make that team. That team was very good at basketball, but he fucking, hiya! And it was like, oh, this guy's different. And then he was on, you know, magazines. He had a Hummer, and he's been, he was deemed the king of basketball when he was like 14, 15 years old. And he's only, I think, shown up and really... In an incredible fashion. I think he's made some mistakes, PR-wise. I think everybody has and will whenever you're growing up with everything kind of handed to you. And you don't know, like, not handed to you, but the world literally in your palms. But I think he has really lived up to all the expectation that has ever been placed on him somehow, some way. With that being said, it's, this feels awkward in L.A., doesn't it? Because now I'm reading reports and tweets, and I don't know enough about it. you have to tell me more. Palinka, who's the GM, has the bus family support, and LeBron is openly uh, pitching against Palinka. And now there's a little bit of a separation between. And in my eyes, I just assume that wasn't ever going to be possible with LeBron James. Like, LeBron James is LeBron James, so whatever ha he wants kind of happens. That's not how it goes, I guess. And is that kind of what's taking place in L.A.? Okay, so this has been obviously a disappointing season for the Lakers. I think they're 27-31. and 31. They're oh, fighting for a play-in spot. This is, this is a team that had, Pat, champ, championship expectations. LeBron championship James is on the team. LeBron James is on Anytime the team. Anytime you have LeBron James on the team, Anthony Davis on the team, Russell Westbrook making $47 million on the team. Oh. He was supposed to be – he was billed as the third star. You traded – Davis Caldwell Pope, Montrez Harold basically got rid of Alex Caruso to bring in this guy, Russell Westbrook. And it, it, it has been a flop so far. And, and I think, you know, what, I, what I'm seeing is just a level of frustration right now. And what we've seen from LeBron James teams in the past, you know, you look at that 2018 Cavs team. That team went to the finals. And they were kind of similar in the halfway point of the season as this Lakers team is. They were struggling. They needed to make mass changes. And when we've seen a LeBron James team struggle, what typically tends to happen is that they, that they rotate players, right? Is they ship guys out, bring new guys in, and put a new, fresh model around LeBron James and a new team uh, around LeBron to just give them a chance to figure it out. Because anytime you have LeBron James on your team, you want to figure it out. So what I'm seeing, and, and obviously, again, he made comments to Jason Lloyd of The Athletic. Um, he, that, that's, that's definitely a level of frustration to me. And... I spoke to Rich Paul. Rich Paul told me there is no issues between him and the Lakers. There's no issues between Clutch Sports okay. and Rob Palenka. He go. told me there's oh, no issues between LeBron and the Lakers. Good. And so R Rich is an agent that has made a history of going on the record. If he feels a certain way, he's not afraid to, to hide it. And so uh, I, you know, for him to say that, and he did go on the record with me today when I spoke to him, and he said there, there's no – there's no friction there. Of course, there is a level of frustration. Um, and I think when you talk to other members of, of, of the of the Lakers roster, there's definitely uh, frustration. They did not see this season going this way. And so uh, the only move that they really could have made that would have made a difference was trading Russell Westbrook for John Wall. That would have required uh, draft assets from the Lakers going to Houston. And, and if you're the Lakers, would you really trade a draft asset for for a guy that obviously John Wall hasn't played this season. Um, but, you know, you kind of just have to live with the bed that you made. Um, and yeah. so they made the decision to stand pat. And I, I personally think that that's a, a wise choice because this team, 
clearly does not have the makings of a championship uh, roster as of right now. So um, we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, when I did speak to Rich Paul, he made it clear that there, it, it, as he says, there, there are no issues. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just something that, that you know, they, they're going to have to deal with. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, because – Rich Paul seemed to take the high road there when he could have said, Fire to rain. <laughs> that was awesome. All I could think of is him and Adele sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you were like, did you, when you talked to Rich Paul earlier, I'm like, oh, he's probably sitting right next to Adele. Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably just sitting right next to the best pipes in the game. Yeah, hanging oh. out. And Rich Paul was up there at the goddamn, uh, the, uh, oh, yeah, the, 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 the hill yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, Pat, but l- 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 let's talk about this, though. Like, getting Russell Westbrook, this is something that, all, they all wanted, right? LeBron James wanted this. Anthony Davis wanted this. The Lakers, front office, Rob Palinka, yeah, ownership. They all yeah. wanted Russell Westbrook. And so, you know, if you want to play hindsight 2020 and look at it from, you know, from the point now where you want to second guess it, I mean, I guess they can. And that's what might be what, what's going on. But to me, if this is the decision everyone wanted, it's hard for me to see that you can then, you know, throw, you know, throw blame on you know it's, it's hard to blame on others. Russell I think, Westbrook. I think everyone hey why I doesn't think, it work why doesn't it work with Russell Westbrook is he just because I've seen him shoot a ball over the backboard yeah I, I I don't follow close enough but Russell Westbrook Brody okay super mm. intense super competitive freak athlete gonna go hard every single night both ends of the floor just that's kind of like what the the conversation around him is mm-hmm. right super competitive willing to fight look like a guy you want on your team dog hey, dog yeah. yeah he's a football we're, player we're, playing football great basketball. competitor mm-hmm. i just think i just think with russell westbrook i mean clearly the shooting fit hasn't worked out i think yeah he shot that, it over the backboard yeah. what happened is he forgot how to play basketball yeah. or what is it he's shooting like you out there pat no 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 whoa, I, whoa. I, I, no, no, no. Russ, I, I mean, Russ is. you got the stroke you got the stroke. hey come on Sean you know that but I'm happy to hear that there isn't any actual beef over there and this will probably what what do you think the future looks like you're saying that maybe they could turn it around let's assume let's, that let's, doesn't happen I don't I don't see a scenario where I personally right now I don't see a scenario where LeBron James is bolting the Lakers for the Cavaliers I I don't see that scenario now could he retire one day on a on a one one day contract as a member of the Cavs sure but as of right now LeBron James, from everything I've been told, his plan is to be a Laker. His plan is to be a Laker uh, for for the foreseeable future and ride this out. But again, Pat, there's going to be a level of frustration. All Star Weekend was in Cleveland, and you know I'm sure LeBron James, Anthony Davis, they've all been shouldering the burden of this season. This season has not gone the way that they expected. The team isn't constructed the way that they all expected it to be constructed. And so, uh, what you're seeing now is is the results of it. And when there are expectations, when there's championship aspirations uh you know th- there's going to be a level of blame that falls on everyone i think you're starting to see that level of blame uh, in LA. fall on these guys but also th- they've been without kendrick nunn all year and i'm not trying to hype up kendrick nunn but yeah. that's a guy that you give five million dollars to he's yeah, okay. he's he's the yeah. highest guy that they paid this offseason because they really didn't have much money available after they made the trade for russell westbrook so they give kendrick nunn five million dollars he's supposed to be their big addition coming off the bench and he um, has yet to play this season. Yeah, but there's no way that the Lakers ever land in a situation where they can ask, ask him about Brawny. Why, what, what's yeah. the whole conversation about Brawny then, Sean? Yeah, Sean, is, is the plan for LeBron just to retire and then, you know, wherever Brawny goes, he'll go, and then maybe, you know, he goes to the Lakers and he comes back? What's the deal with Brawny? Is it a foregone I, conclusion that Brawny is making the NBA as well? Yeah, is he the first pick in the I draft? Mean, is there, is I that, mean, listen, listen, if, if a team really feels that they can go get LeBron James by drafting Brawny, I mean, maybe so. <laughs> I, m- is that a package deal? The yeah. Let's get him to Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> is he coming to the Pacers? Pacers are in a spot for a lottery pick all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pacers yep. trade all their good players. We get I, was about to say, I was about to say, I mean, Im- imagine imagine LeBron James and Bronny in, like, Minnesota. Oh, like, yes. oh, okay. oh you're on. Yeah, 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 some of these smaller markets that we Detroit. never envisioned LeBron James playing on. Like, that would be that would be pretty interesting, pretty neat to see LeBron James bolt to a team like that. Um, the way I interpreted those comments, though, Pat, is that, this is a guy that obviously would love to play with his son. He'd, he'd love to play against him. And I think even more, he'd love to be in that same locker room. Will that happen? I, I don't, you know, Indiana, we're two years, three years out from on. that. So it's tough for me to say, you know, I, it doesn't seem like the high school, the straight high school, the NBA rule is progressing the way everyone thought it would. So, you know, if, LeBron, if Bronny has to spend a year in college, that obviously pushes this all back. So um, I, 
I, listen, man, I think we all, I, I think he'd love to play with his son. The question is, you know, will, will that happen? Hey, that was a great, as soon as your sentence ended, by the way, we went to a break. It's serious there. Hard out. You did incredible stuff there. Crushed it. Go ahead, Ty. <laughs> Shams, are there any plans to change the NBA All-Star Weekend? The game was pretty sweet, but that Saturday night absolutely fucking stunk, and they know it. Uh, are there any plans to change that moving forward or no? Are, are you hearing that they're just blowing smoke up each other's ass and saying it was a great weekend? I haven't heard any plan for them to change anything about All Star Saturday night. Um, you know, dunk contest. I was there. I was. I, I was in Cleveland. Stunk. Got back on Stunk. The, the the dunk contest was was. Uh, you know, it. it, it you can it, say it. You can say it. You can say it. <laughs> Stunk. The dunk contest did not live up to the hype. But listen, Jalen Green. If, if he makes some of those dunks, I think we have a different complexion of all this. Well, he I had don't some think sick so. dunks, guys. He didn't make the dunks. <laughs> So we have what we have. I don't know what the league can do. I I really don't think it's about money for these guys because if it was about money, I really think they would have upped it to one million cash prize winner. It's not. I don't think it's about the money. So if it's not if it's not about the money, uh, I don't know who's participating because you know the the ability to to look bad, to look embarrassed. Pull that's something. something that these guys have to deal with. So and pull uh, something because you're doing super explosive do. stuff. I mean, there's. But I watched the Bulls warm up video. Oh. Yeah, the Bulls weren't oh, with yeah. like Levine. They got some. Dunks. I think oh, even yeah. Caruso oh, was yeah. doing like 360 dunks or something like that. And then you watch, you go to a game, and in warm ups, you see guys bouncing it off the ground, off the backboard, windmill dunking, and then just jogging back to a line. It's like then you watch the All Star game and the dunk contest. It's it, like. The it's shit gotta be. It's gotta be the nerves because I saw those guys practicing their dunks before the lights came oh, on, before the, the time right. went on. They the, play oh, in the, the NBA, Sean. They were the they were making all their dunks. They were not missing. So how do you miss dunks when the lights are on? I don't know, man. Might be some pressure there. Bullshit. Stop getting the eleventh guy off the bench and get yeah, some stars in there. And yeah, these guys are all boozing up, probably. It's it was bad. an amazing to see John Morant participate. Yeah. Oh. Anthony Edwards, but yeah. those guys. Those guys just well, might not view themselves as in-game dunkers. All right. We appreciate you, Shams. You're the best, dude. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hey, what's the next news break? Probably that New York lifts the mandate today or anything else? <laughs> who's going to win? Uh, who's gonna win? In, the few, in, in the next few weeks. I don't know about today. That, that, would, be, that would be welcoming news, though, for the NBA and for uh, Kyrie Irving and the Nets. Oh, so maybe let's get – hey, Mayor. Let's go ahead and get hey, that. What do you say, Mayor? Huh? What do we say? We beat COVID, huh? Come on, Mayor. <laughs> Listen, well, it was a long, hard fight. Yeah. We're at the point now, though, where, hey, listen, this guy, we beat that thing, lift a mandate, let Kyrie play. Who's going to win this whole thing? Who should we be thinking about in here? Who's doing oh, good? Oh, man. I, I I still think Brooklyn, you know, it, once they get all these guys back, they've, they've got to be the team to beat on paper. But Miami, Milwaukee, the old Philadelphia. Can Ben Simmons shoot? With Brooklyn. Did Ben learn how to shoot? That we will have to wait the next couple of weeks to <laughs> no. see. So uh, that, I, I don't know KD. the answer to that, Pat. He just got passed that. Yeah. Yeah. Get, rebound. Rebound. Get rebounds. Bingo. Play yeah. defense. He's but listen, on, He's on that team, if he plays the Draymond Green role, yeah. you know how, how how amazing that team will be? They have shooting. Kyrie, Seth Curry, Kevin Durant. They got the shooting. They just need someone that can play defense, distribute the ball. Um, and if Ben can bring yeah, damn, an offensive play, game that we haven't seen so far, that team is going to be scary. You know, so those teams in the East, and then Utah, Phoenix, Golden Celtics, State, Suns I think and Warriors those are the face. teams in, uh, in in the West. All right. Well, we pre- Steph Curry, I heard he's back, huh? Oh, Steph yeah. Curry. oh yeah. Golden All-Star State. Game MVP. Steph Curry, Steph Curry all of a yeah. sudden yeah, again. Was, Celtics might go on a run. We get uh, moving shoes. The Bulls, Celtics actually. stink. Yeah. Celtics stink. Uh, oh, the Bulls. Just like the Bruins stink. That's not for Sean. Sean, we appreciate you, man. Can't wait to <laughs> see you break more news. Thank you. Keep running up the score, by the way, in that insider game. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Strong. Yay, Sean! I didn't think we were going to hear from Sean so we beat COVID, but fuck here we are. Jeez, he's an insider, not us. Yeah. Uh, he knows. Tell you what, internet doesn't want to accept it, but we did. Well, I saw COVID's not over trending this weekend when I hopped on my phone one time, and I was like, oh, so that means somebody was saying it was over other than us. Who, mm, who, who was that? Who was, oh, it was a couple countries, I guess. Right? Ah, perfect. Gotcha. Denmark. People are not exactly thrilled with their decisions, I guess. Hashtag COVID's not over. But then I seen everybody else just kind of going out to stadiums and just screaming on top of each other. Ah. It's over, dude. I'm not saying it. I'll say it. No, no, I, no I, take, I take it back. Yeah. Every time someone says it, they die. So. Yeah, because then you're they did, actually COVID comes back and dances yeah. over your grave. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So we just we just want to celebrate the potential that hey, potential. you know, we beat might, it. Might be done. Yeah. We lost a lot of incredible people. Okay, it was obviously something that'll be remembered as a terror to the entire world for a long time. Did something nobody thought was possible to the world at all. Took a lot of fucking incredible people that we all cared about. 
lasted a lot longer than any of us could have imagined. But I believe what Sean just said was we fucking beat it, dude. Congrats to all of us. Congrats, guys. Way to go, Foxy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Fox. Yeah, baby. Way you guys go. remember when Foxy said it was going to last maybe a week? I do. Yeah. Like two weeks. Well, he wasn't the only one who said it was only going to last two weeks. Two mm -hmm. weeks is what I said. I meant two years, though, and that's exactly where we're at. Two years. But, hey, those people were saying that on a lot of programs. Were they getting attacked for misinformation like I was on? No, I don't it? think so. No. And, I mean, we Let's have to, to give break. credit to the first man who pointed it out. No, no, no. Let's get to a break. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Merrill Hodge. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of play on this show. Yeah. He does. <laughs> the stats. He's the one that Vegas first isn't out. even Vegas anymore. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> 500,000 is a big number. But when you put it over 360 million, it ain't that big. All of a sudden. <laughs> he's out in Vegas. He says, there's nobody out here. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> the fucker. Nobody to play golf with. Yeah. A month into the pandemic. I only got two tea times behind me. What the hell? The course is wide open. Hey, I think he's going to take some victory laps, though, the more. Oh, oh, oh yeah. The, as the years roll by. He was pissed at Radio Rock. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back in four minutes. Uh, hour two with AJ Hawk, fresh out the sea. Wow. Hey. Yeah, and then Michael Lombardi will join us. Let's go. talk about all things franchise tag, free agency, and hopefully your phone calls on a 5 Energy phone line, one 833 4 We'll chat with you in four. Cheers. Breaking the table, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't break shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> somebody oh, yeah. came sprinting behind the barrier and tried to spear him. He I fucking dare somebody. <laughs> <laughs> hold up, hold up, I dare the next two ass kicking. What? what? Saudi Arabia. What? Riyadh. What? Taking a jet plane. What? All the way there. What? All the way back. What? All the way back. What? Coming to be champion. What? Oh! Yeah! Are you <laughs> Hell yeah! 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 Steven in Nashville enough. What's going on, Steven? Hey, hello. Pat, you guys can hear me? the worst call we've ever had, Stephen. Oh, my God. <laughs> so mean. Stephen. Hello? Stephen. Yeah. Worst call we've ever had. So much dead air there. <laughs> Yo, Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Hello? Know what you say? I was going to hit him again. What? Yo, Pat. No, Pat? Pat? Hey, Pat, can you hear me? Stephen does not deserve this. <laughs> Steven, what's going on, dude? How's it going on, Steven? Sorry, your phone would shut. Pat McAfee, can you hear me? Steven, Steven, you there? Pat, can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> Is there a cup of string? Steven! Yo, Pat. Pat, can you hear me? Steve? Hello? Steve! Pat! Hey, there you are. Hey, Hello? what's going on, Steve? Hey, Steven, sorry about that. I think we're having connection issues. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, man. I didn't know if that was me or if you were trying to talk to another guy. And then, and then I didn't hear you guys. Steve! Yeah. Hello? Oh, we lost him again, I think. Shit. Pat! Can you? No, I don't. Pat, can you hear me? Steve, Steve, Steve. Hey, Steve, there you are, Steve. Pat! Pat! Steve. Pat! Hey. Pat! Steve, 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 Steve,
The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show you? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show, Hour 2, on this Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. Shall it begin right now? Yeah! Last couple seconds here. I need to get back into it. It does carry a little longer than you think it's going to in my particular brain. i got to carry the... A little bit longer. Got pretty wow. good rolling your R's yeah. there, though. That was good about it. It was very close. We came out of nowhere there, by the way, yeah. with that thing, because wow. Shams told us we beat COVID, which is fantastic Thank news. You, Shams. A lot of people on the internet tell me that is not the case. But what? Hey, listen. Hey, per Shams reporting. I didn't say yeah. a mayor of New York. Yeah, insider. Right. Yeah, not me. Uh, talks to tables here at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Boston Connor said a lot of things about COVID for a long time that haven't been real, but what we heard was from Shams. What? That is what we're talking about. What's that, dude? What do you mean? I, all, everything I've said about COVID has been fact. Well, actually, I think there was one time you spoke about COVID. We pushed back a little bit, and you said, I saw it on meme. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And there were stats on that meme. Okay? That's all you need. It's kind of the problem. You know, it's kind of. I was gonna say I, that's a perfectly reasonable response, yes. and that's an issue. Yeah, that's it. well. <laughs> and think about it: like whenever we were going through school, we weren't allowed to uh, source Wikipedia. Yeah. Okay, because True. Wikipedia was written True. by people yeah. or whatever. Anybody. Nowadays, sure. I assume Wikipedia is okay. Can't be sourcing memes, I assume, in papers nowadays. Uh, yeah. Can't just screenshot a meme from an account and put it in there. I assume that is the rule in the modern world. Well, I mean, mean, welcome to the modern world, Pat. They should change that rule. Mm-hmm. I think. Listen, whenever I was trying to bullshit my way through whatever class I did not pay attention to, and they banned Wikipedia, it was like, this is the one-stop shop for all the information I fucking need. Now I can't use this? What is your guys' deal? We're not trying to learn stuff here? Uh, So I had to... Basically, write everything that I learned from the Wikipedia, and then you do reverse. Correct. Yeah. Boom. Then you go find where. Find some bogus Bingo. article yeah. and then source Boom. it. Boom. Yep. Then you do that. Yeah. Bingo. That was the game. You had to learn that very quickly. <laughs> but it was like, I assume that is now for the memes because of what happened with you. But nonetheless, Tone Diggs is here, the COVID cowboy. He beat COVID. Shout out to Tone. Hey, Tony. Tony. Tone. Another COVID survivor joining us from an attic in Ohio. He's a college football national champion. A Ryder Cup champion, mm. and if you checked at NFL Throwbacks Instagram or Twitter yesterday, an absolute beast of an NFL football player, <laughs> Super Bowl champion, all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, fresh off a ship that went to sea for a cult fundraiser, mm. ladies and gentlemen, Aaron James Hawk. Yay! Yay! Hey, you're glowing, dude. What's up? Wow. What's up, man? Hey, who's going to ask John Hamm about his big dong tonight on Hockey Talk? <laughs> Okay, hey, uh, welcome yeah. back, Hell AJ. Yeah. Good hey, to I have just, you. Yeah, I just saw the preview here while I was waiting to come on. That's awesome. Congrats, guys. Yeah, congrats to that's Hockey Talk. Big special edition of Hockey Talk tonight starting at 8.30 Eastern time. YouTube.com forward slash that's Hockey Talk. There'll be some hockey chatter. And then the hammer, the hammaconda. John Ham, noted St. Louis Blues fan, will join the boys of that's Hockey Talk. Nick, let's have a night. Hey, huh? here we go, hey, boys. Go now, boys. Pumped up. Can't wait to. Uh, wrestle with the Hamaconda, you know, get some uh, actual hockey talk out of him. AJ, I promise it will be addressed, but we will spend most of the time, a majority of the time, talking about actual hockey and Maybe. not his penis. Well, I mean, who knows where that conversation about the Hamaconda, the Hammer, is going to go. I mean, don't, let's not yeah. do bad hosting. You know, Ham's coming on a great show. No, no, it, it will be addressed. Don't, don't get me wrong. But you don't know where that's going to go. I, I mean, Could eat up 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, because yeah. what if he talks about being on the set of whatever that like Mad, Mad, Mad Man? Mad Man uh, and then, uh, well, well, then actually, there was wind, the town, and then, town, the town, and then yeah. there was something to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. So let's not let's not put any restrictions on what this conversation with the hammer is going to be. What if he accidentally flings it over his shoulder? Like, yeah. oh, exactly. Then you don't have to address not, it. Talking about my penis. Penis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you never know. I mean, it'll be. Listen, it's not turning into penis talk. It's going to be hockey talk. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, respect, Fair. respect. See what respect, the chat respect. has to say about that. That's penis talk. There's going to be a lot of people getting tossed in the sin bin in that comment section. I can oh, already yeah. right. tell tonight. Um, but I'm very pumped for that conversation because he is a noted hockey lover and fan and also an incredibly famous human being. That's great booking by the rubber, baby. Yeah, yeah, baby rubber. Rubber. Absolutely. Hey, rubber. Uh, AJ, welcome back, dude. It's great to see you. How was the ship? How was the cruise? You look fantastic, and it's nice to see you're still alive, pal. 
Yeah, everything was great. Um, missed you guys. Missed being on the program. I know you guys had Aaron on yesterday. I was able to watch it. I thought it was it was very uh, it was great. You know, listen to him. Can just kind of hear what his brain has been going through, isn't it? Like, you just got off one of those twelve day old PKs too, right? <laughs> yeah. So, well, all right, let's jump right into it. You knew. So what do you do? You just dump and puke for 12 days or how's it work? Well, I think like three days of double, double, you yeah. know, attic uh, and yeah. basement. Mm-hmm. I think three days of that, four days of the one end, the other, five days of the other end. And then you refill and then you go from bottoms up and then you do the whole thing. I don't listen. People do a lot of things. I've actually asked when we began this show to a lot of uh, professional athletes. I said, you do any weird shit? Keep your body. You know, and that was like one of my standard questions Mm -hmm. I used to ask because people, the things I would hear people would do to keep their bodies like, right. Like, you know, you hear about the wine baths Mm -hmm. and then like you hear about like, you hear about all these off stories like, oh, this guy used to actually drink his urine because like, it's like, well, Patches, Patches Mm -hmm. did that in Mm Dodge, but it's like, no, he did because everything you said, it is very good for you to get it back. Like there's people that do weird shit to keep their bodies in line. Now a cleanse like that, I've never heard of PK. Is that something you were very common knowledge of? Did you know what PK was? And do you do that alongside of him? And how long do you think he's been doing that? Because boy, the internet was captivated by the old puke and poop cleanse i i was not aware of uh of the exact cleanse i guess that he he has done i know he's talked about it before I, maybe he's mentioned the name to me i never followed up followed up i guess but no i've never done anything nearly as as extreme as that i've done like the whole 24 hours you know fasting with just water for a couple of days or just no food no water for a day all that but not in a long long time is that just because you guys want to test your body your discipline is that what that's about what do you think it's about I don't bored. You get bored probably. You want to give something a shot. <laughs> All right. That's kinda that's that's kinda like with me when I when I've tried it. All right, so listen. Shane Lee and laughed in the back of yesterday's interview with him. I mean, it hasn't yeah. been confirmed. Oh, yeah. hasn't without, been confirmed. without a doubt. How hasn't however. confirmed. Hasn't confirmed. Hasn't been confirmed. I heard they weren't together. I don't know what's going on. Something somebody didn't wrong. ask. Well, kinda. I, I kinda he did. did. And he mm-hmm. said it was a TV, but she's on TV, right? I yeah. mean, so that could have oh, been true. You know, I thought about this last night. Oh, yeah. I thought about this last night a bit. I was like, oh, so that was his answer because it could have. Anyways, the Internet Sleuth said that was her laugh. And I've never seen her in anything, but I guess it did sound like her laugh. And it it immediately got quiet afterwards. I didn't see him hit a mute button. And there was some dishes she seemed to be doing in the back or like some pots moving around or something. So, I mean, we don't know the case. But do you think like whenever he was presented with PK... He said, like, yep, immediately, whenever he heard about the puking and the pooping the entire time, and he just what, wanted to try it out. And it seems like it gets him in a very good spot mentally. I think it isn't the only type of, like, um, like uh, serenity. There we go. Yeah. Serenity Ooh. type thing mm-hmm. or, like, uh, mental yeah. type thing. Do you, has he always been into that like type of stuff, you think? Or do you think Shailene potentially brought some into his life and he's loved it? That's why he feels such a connection with her i mean I, i'm sure she has brought some of that into his life he's always been into you know how he like just how he is he's a unique weird dude he's always <laughs> trying to find like what can what he can do to be better physically and mentally and all that and you see this whole path that he, he is on love and light gratitude all of this stuff ringo Starr's old tagline from back in the day so i feel like it's uh this is who, he's, who he is right now. It's what he's doing. But, hey, no matter what, though, he seems pretty damn happy. So, I guess. Oh, he's fucking pumped. So, I don't know <laughs> yeah. how. There's people mad. Okay, like Stephen A. Smith, who, by the way. What? Got nothing but love for Love him. Stephen uh-huh. A. Love it. Stephen Stevie. A. Brings it. Has been bringing it for a long time. He, his, his take on it. We love see. It's like I don't care. I don't want to hear from him until he makes a decision. Okay, I don't. I don't want to hear any. Like I love that take, you know, because it's like, well, I don't want to hear about LeBron and Jordan again until they play. Until they actually play, yeah, you know, like yeah. we could kind of dive into that for all of sports talk if we wanted to. But I think a lot of people thought he was going to announce his decision. Yes, I even kind of thought like, OK, if we're doing this, there has to be some sort of conversation. Like I didn't know what was going to until, you know, it started unfolding. But everybody, I think, was mad that their expectation was he was going to say exactly what he was doing. But I think he gave a lot of information in that 42 minutes yesterday, like a lot. I think a lot was said yesterday. Everybody was like nothing was said. It was like, I disagree. I think we learned. He seems to be very happy with the Packers organization, mm. much more so than last year. Whenever he went to dinner instead of making, meeting with the coaches, because he had some Buddhist shit to talk about. You, that happened last year. I don't think that's happening this year with Lafleur. Yes. I mean, and then he's talked like I just feel like he said a lot yesterday. AJ, and am I am I wrong in thinking that? Was I on too many vitamins while the conversation was happening about the PK <laughs> cleanse? Like I think I heard a lot yesterday. Did you not hear the same? Oh, 
I think we definitely heard a lot, but I guess, yeah, what do I say? It's about managing expectations. Like, it's like movies. Don't tell me this movie is the best movie ever because it's probably not going to live up to that. So if people were expecting him to come on and say, yep, this is exactly what I'm doing. This is my plan moving forward next year. Yeah, then you may be a little disappointed to hear Never said this, that, by what the he's way. doing no, in his no. personal life and any cleanse he's doing. Never said it. Didn't even say his name. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Whenever, like, it, you know, the conversation happened. Oh, was, you didn't? No, not until no. the show Showtime. started. Showtime. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, who, what do you mean? Who cares? What, what does it matter? Well, I don't care. You know, like, I love, I love that take from Stephen A. I yeah. absolutely enjoyed it because a lot of people, you know, why do we talk to Aaron Rodgers. Why do you talk about Aaron? It's the MVP of the fucking biggest league that we cover every single day. The fact that we just so happen to get a chance to chat with him every week, like, Mm -hmm. this is a huge story, a huge deal. It feels like, AJ, and they make this Kenny Clark move, which, by the way, is breaking news this morning. Gunta Kuntz, who is currently talking in a press conference right now, we will try to keep up with his quotes for the Green Bay Packers. They redid Kenny Clark's contract, adding voidable years at the end to save themselves $10 million off the cap that they're over already in, like $40 million, $30 million or whatever. So they're, they're making that play that all the other GMs that are winning are doing. They're doing the voidable years signing bonus, kick the can down the road, basically. It feels like the Packers are trying everything they can to keep him around. After talking to him yesterday, it feels like that seems like a very viable option. And you've been that way since the beginning, by the way. You actually put like 200, uh, no, it might have been 100,000. Yes. 100,000 on Super yeah. Bowl on the line for that thing. I don't know if I did or not, but I, I would imagine, like, we, know, we don't know what he's doing. Like, who knows if he knows what he is going to do. But if you're a Green Bay Packer fan, you want him back to the Packers, I would imagine what he said yesterday has you feeling a little bit better because of the relationships that he has with those guys in the front office, the moves they're making. Did they officially hire Tom Clements? As yes, a yeah. he actually talked about that yesterday. He's mm-hmm. like, I love this guy. I absolutely love – Yeah. That's, I, I think that's huge too. He, he loves Tom and what he can do. And actually when we were in L.A., I'm glad Tom was hired now. Sam, your wife, uh, Foxy's girl, Reagan, right? Yep. Yep. And my wife went to – they you know, they hiked – they did the whole L.A. They hiked up a canyon for two and a half hours, did the whole thing. Yeah. They went to lunch somewhere. They walked into – LaFleur and Tom Clemens having a meeting. I don't even know if you if you know that. Why they, we were in LA what? doing Radio Row and my wife's like, Tom, what are you doing? And then LaFleur and he she said LaFleur was so confused. Like it was uh yeah, so she got to say hi. Laura knows Tom asked. though, right? Yeah, obviously. Knows who? Your wife obviously knows Tom. Yeah, she knows Tom because Tom's wife is one of the biggest interior designers on the planet, does like Kardashian's houses and gigantic. So my wife's gone out and worked with her for weeks at a time. Oh, and also the football connection, I assume, with wow. the whole thing. So you're yeah. So we had inside my wife. I, guess they, I didn't even put it together. I didn't even put it together at the time. She's like, oh, yeah, I saw Tom. In the <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what if we would have broke that? <laughs> what the Dude, hell? According to our sources, and we just open up uh, Mrs. Hawk, Mrs. McAfee, what? and Reagan <laughs> are telling us that LaFleur and Tom Clements are currently meeting right now in Los Angeles at a restaurant. That is massive because... You know, Aaron loves this man. Mm-hmm. That would be, that's awesome. So that came together a Super Bowl week. So it is with that happening. And then the Kenny Clark signing. And then the way Aaron was talking yesterday about the Packers and Matt LaFleur and his relationship. It just, I don't know. I mean, Colts, Colts love that. Hey, we got a team. Yeah. We got a team. You know what I mean, AJ? We got a team down here. Oh, the Colts, are they? Are the Colts in the mix still? No, they're, no, they're, they're, they're not. They're not. They're yeah, I mean, yeah, what are you talking they're about? Not. There's a billboard. There's a billboard. We yeah. want Rodgers. Yeah, so you're in the mix. Let's read the oh, signs, who put, though. Who put it up? wasn't me. It was Wade Law. I never heard of them, by the way, but they're about to be better lawyers than what Flores got, dude. Oh, jeez. Listen, I, we, got, we got Lombardi joining us right now, but I am unusually perturbed about something that is happening Ooh. on the internet right now. Like, le- legitimately. Like, I don't think I should be this upset about it, but it's kind of... I think they're making... Fl- oh, wait, there's some breaking Tom Brady news? Wow. He's back? Zito just uh, came in, in his first post-retirement move. Tom Brady will produce and star in a new road trip movie titled 80 for Brady. The film will also feature Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Mar- Zito. I mean, this. Who cares? <laughs> Zito. <laughs> Zito. I mean, who? Jane Fonda? Yeah, what I mean, 80 for Brady? What is that about? I don't know. I'm pumped about it. I'm excited about Tom getting in his, <laughs> you know, getting into a what? new world. It's the Gronk route. Okay, this guy's got crypto, obviously. Giselle, yeah, Giselle's doing jujitsu now, yeah. too. That's yeah. breaking oh, yeah. Kicking Sick. people's ass, yeah. by the way, jujitsu. Uh, and now he's uh, acting in a, yeah, acting in Why a movie. Why is he driving cross country with Sally Field? 
Because he's making content, dude. Yeah. Katie for Brady. Lucrative <laughs> acting Lucrative career. Acting career. Yeah. He's going to remake Wild Hogs. Oh. He's going to crush it. We have Lombardi, I think, right? Yeah. 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 Damn, Brady's going to kill him. Anyways, that. back to the thing. Flores is a, uh, lawyers that are representing him in this whole thing. They need to just. It just. Really? Bro, yeah. They. Yeah. Were they on, wait, were they on camera again? I know we're getting to. Yeah. to so here, here, here's from. Uh, Wigdor Law, okay, mm -hmm. which I assume this person is either a lawyer or covers the law field. In response to the Dolphins calling Brian Flores' assertion of an NDA categorically false, below are screenshots from the draft agreement and payment termination notice. If Brian Flores had signed this, he would have been gagged and unable to talk about his experience in the NFL. Okay, so Brian Flores came, uh, he was at uh, Real Sports. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think he was on Real Sports. And he said that the Dolphins uh, wanted him to have sign an NDA. That's why he's not getting paid his money. And they had screenshots of it after uh, the Dolphins came out and said, no, that's not the case at all. We did not want him to sign an NDA to give him money. And then they posted the, the letter that the Miami uh, Dolphins sent to Brian Flores, which says, we write to provide you notice that in accordance with paragraph 10 of the February 4th, 2019 employment agreement between you and the Miami club, the club is terminating payments of all non-accrued benefits and compensation described uh, in paragraph three of the agreement effective immediately based on your failure to execute the club's separation and release agreement. You're not entitled to receive continuing payments under the agreement. So additionally, so they were basically sending, additionally, pursuant to paragraph 16 of the agreement, you must promptly return any and all work product as described in the agreement and are required to observe all confidentiality obligations set forth in paragraph 14 of the agreement, as well as any other applicable provisions. We have attached a copy of your agreement to this notice to ensure that you are aware of your responsibilities under it. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or would like to discuss sincerely Brandon Shore, Senior Vice President, Football and Business Administration. So they, the, the Dolphins basically just sent him a letter saying, hey, you signed this deal February 4th, 2019. In this deal, which I think is pretty standard amongst NFL contracts with coaches, players, and by the way, not just in the NFL, any contract that you sign that is of worth anything, a part of that contract is, hey, if this ends, you cannot bury us. And if you do bury us, this is potential fallout from this entire thing. It's like almost in every single contract. I think in the NFL, players definitely have it. Coaches, I'd assume, have it after this one. And any, I don't know if it's right. I don't think it's right. Hey, listen, I'm just telling you how fucking contracts work. Like in... In fairy tale world, like truth always comes out. If people get fucked over, that whole thing happens. But in like the real world, there's contracts and stuff that save people's asses. And billionaires have lawyers that go through the contracts to keep the money in their pockets that they think they are owed and to save themselves from situations. They screenshot these paragraphs in this Twitter account. And basically they say, if this ends, you will have, yeah, here it is. Non-disparagement. Employee agrees to not make any disparaging or untruthful remarks regarding MDL, which is the Miami Club, or any other release which are could reasonably be interpreted to be of a negative or critical nature, including but not limited to statements of omissions regarding uh, Miami's business practices, professionalism, events in the workplace, and or employee separation from employment. Specifically, employees shall not engage in any type of communication, electronic, written, or verbal with third parties that directly or indirectly disparage or injury, but whatever. So this Basically, the Miami club was sending this letter to Brian Flores to let him know, hey, you signed a deal already that said you wouldn't do anything. And since you broke all of these things, we're not going to give you money. But the lawyers for Brian Flores are like, oh, look, they sent this. This is what they were. It was like, no, you fucking idiots. Like, that, 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 that can't. You know what I mean? Like, this made me very mad because Flores could potentially change something very good for the NFL. This is an obvious problem, okay? The coaching process to become a head coach in the NFL as a whole, big problem, could become something. These lawyers doing these interviews and then making dumb comments like this. Like, I just, I think it's not good. Like, these motherfuckers just need to kind of slide aside because this is just natural contracts. And although in the court of public opinion, you might be able to shape it as a vote, but if this was actually to go to court or to anybody that knows anything about contracts, you're fucked. So it's like, I just think yeah. that it's all, you know what I mean? I'm getting, I was unusually perturbed about this whenever I was reading it because it's like, how come nobody's even reading this? Unless the Dolphins are just lying and they just added that as clauses in a contract that he didn't actually sign. He would probably have a written copy of that as well, a hard copy, but it's unbelievable. It's just a very interesting situation. Very, very interesting to me.
What, what, were you thinking when they're talking NDA and the Dolphins trying to get him to sign one that they were they brought it to him like this last month, right? Is yes, that what you're saying? that's the way they're pitching it. Yeah, right. is yeah. that this NDA was brought not your not the original contract you signed like that always has provisions in there like you just read. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like I don't know. Joining us now is a man who probably knows a lot more about this than yeah. any of us, and it's actually a perfect transition almost. Uh, former general manager in the NFL, a man who's been a coaching advisor, uh, coaching counsel, uh, general manager, obviously a scout and assistant coach. He's an author, a speaker, podcast host, a guy who never stops stopping. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah! Thank you, Pat. Thank you, guys. Hey. Pat, I, I had the same reaction. I, I think this is a little bit of a misplaced of the chain of evidence. Okay, when Brian signed that original contract in February 19th after the Super Bowl victory against the Los Angeles Rams, oh, yeah. he signed a standard NFL coaching contract that had these NDA clauses attached to him. And that contract was signed by Brian, or, or else he wouldn't have gotten paid. And it was also signed by Commissioner Goodell, like most NFL contracts of employees are signed by, of the coaching. And so that then is being portrayed as the Dolphins put a contract, an NDA, in front of him the day they fired him and said, you be a good boy, or else you're, if you're not, we're not going to pay you. And the chain of events and the chain of custody of the evidence is completely misdated and his lawyers are making it seem like this is wrong. And th look, you can argue all you want. And I'm for Brian. I, I agree with you on we have to do better on minority hiring. And we have to we have to put that in perspective and handle it. That cause is important. But this chain of evidence is completely wrong. And it's skewed towards towards the towards the, the lawyers when they're trying to take sympathy with people that don't understand actually what goes on behind the scenes in the NFL. Yeah, that's by the way, I, I feel like I'm happy to hear that from you because that was my as soon as I read it this morning, I was like, especially after seeing them on get up and then they were doing interviews all by themselves and then they're on real I'm like, all right. Like I by the way, I thought Brian Flores was all, like this is good. This could promote real change. This guy is has pedigree. He has respect from people. He is you know taking like he's doing this. But this just makes it look bad. I think it distracts from the actual thing whenever you do this because it, it looks amateur. It just looks very amateur. But let's let's move on. Well, it, it tries to make it look like they wanted him to sign something because he knew something that happened during his tenure as a coach. So it made it look like they yeah, were yeah. trying to to get him to sign that when in reality this was what he signed originally yes. and that lawyer said so when he stops paying them when they stop paying them because of violation of the nda that's in his coaching contract they have to send him a letter to inform him of what they're doing yeah and then the lawyers flores lawyers like oh we fucking got him and it's like no, it's actually the complete opposite. You're actually giving evidence away for the Dolphins' yeah. standpoint on why they are actually not paying. It's just a very, who knows? I, I hope change is enacted through this entire thing, but it feels like there is going to be a lot of bullshit distractions like there is in everything. Let's get to football chat with your big brain, Lombardi. Um, Whenever you think about the franchise tag and the free agency period, and now you're seeing the Packers do the uh, with Kenny Clark with voidable years and getting below the salary cap gymnastics, do you think this is an entire turn of the way teams are going to be run? Do you think that old school way of the salary cap meaning something is going to continue? Or do you think most teams now are going to live with the motto that none of it means anything these days because you can just kick the can down the road? Well, I think the way the revenue streams are coming in, I mean, you know, the, I just read in Sports Business Journal that the red zone is could, is up for bid and they're going to make an enormous amount of money. And that's good for the players. It's good for the coaches. So and it's good for the cap. And these numbers are going to increase every single day, which means you can keep kicking the can down the road to a degree. I think what the Rams did this year is important because during the 70s, when George Allen was the head coach of the Washington football team, he coined the phrase, the future is now, and he traded away a bunch of draft picks. And then a lot of teams, the Houston Oilers, started trading away draft picks for veteran players. And there was no cap. You could get away with it then. And the Rams have been able to escape that and, and get away with it because they've kicked it down the road. So I could see that. I think the Packers are of a mindset, look, we got to go all in. We got to go up. We got a great, great quarterback who's won MVP two years in a row. Like if we owe it to him to go all in. And so the Kenny Clark deal, I think they'll tag Devontae Adams deal. They're trying to do everything in their power 
to set up their franchise to go all in because what good is if you don't go all in? There's moments as a general manager you have to recognize this is the time I've got to make it. And, and if you don't, you won't get that time again. The Saints did it. They're paying a price today. The Steelers did it for a while. They're paying a price last year, not so much this year. Lombardi, what about Jordan Love? No one talks about him too much right now. Like, What do you think the Packers' views are on Jordan Love, and what's the plan? Of course, they're all in to try to re-sign Aaron. I'm sure Jordan understands that, but do you think they have a plan for Jordan Love moving forward? J-Lo, here we go. I think they have to – they recognize where – you've got to believe that everybody in the organization knows where Jordan Love is the player and what they can expect. And so I think they know that they want – they don't want to be attached to the team that got rid of Aaron Rodgers when he was still his MVP player. I mean, so I think they got to go all in. And Love can wait. I mean, they got three more years of Love. They can get, they can pick up his fifth year option. So they have three more years. There's no rush. There's no real sense of urgency to do anything with Love other than just sit there and let him try to get better and improve. And I think part of this is more about Rodgers being where he is in his career and how great he is as a player. And this is our moment. This is our moment to really do what the Rams did. And we can't fall short. Okay, so let's talk about another young quarterback in Trey Lance. Whenever you think about Shanahan and Lynch, and obviously Jimmy G is on the trade block, right? It's come out. He's basically said goodbye to 49ers. It's all positive. They're saying that they're going to find a trade partner for Jimmy and move on. It's Trey Lance time. If he fails, they're fired? Is that what happens? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I mean, you know, knowing Kyle, as good as he is at finding quarterbacks, I mean, you know, he can find another one that if Lance doesn't live up to the expectations, I'm sure Kyle will have somebody. It'll be interesting who he signs as the backup quarterback, you know, to Lance. I think that'll sell, That'll tell a lot. And do they draft one this year just to make sure they have an economic value at backup? But I, I think they've got to go all in. They, they, they can't risk another year of Garoppolo on the team. If they bring Garoppolo back, the players gravitate towards Garoppolo. They're trying to whatever. Right? That you could say whatever you want. I mean, and Garoppolo has his moments where he looks really good and he looks really bad. But I think the team believes in Garoppolo, so they have to remove him from the team so they can give Lance his fair chance to compete for a starting job, which I think they have to do. Yeah, because the locker room, you know, needs to know. And Jimmy G seems like a guy that everybody loves. I mean, Sherman came out and talked about him. Basically, every teammate's come out and said, like, there's a reason we all go to bat for him. We love this guy. That's why he'd be a great Colt. Guy would be a yeah. great Indianapolis yeah. Colt. He- I, I mean, he would. he's the opposite of what Wentz kind of is. He's certainly the opposite of what we're seeing behavior out of Kyler Murray. Like, his teammates truly love him. Now, they're not. he's not as good a player as some of these guys. But, but when I was there in 14, when he came in, everybody was worried about – who would be able to be in a room with Tom Brady and still learn how to compete? I mean, it's a challenging thing. Now, this is, you know, Tom Brady was 36 years old at that time. So he still had, you know, all these Super Bowl titles in uh, in his resume. And, and Garoppolo never blinked. And he would sit around the table in the in the meal room. As you know, you could really get a read on your football team from when who you watch with, who they eat with. And he was endeared himself to every offensive lineman. The team loved him, and that has carried over. And I think that's an important quality a quarterback has to have. I think it's one of the things missing in Kyler Murray. The meal room is always awesome to kind of just see where you're going to sit at. The rookies, whenever they're deciding, I don't want to say it's like – like a scene from like prison, but it is, it almost is like, you know, and rookies sometimes will like sit together alone, like off by the side. And then as the season rolls on, kind of get comfortable and moving in. It's a fascinating place. That is a very sacred place. I think in all locker rooms, go ahead, Connor. Yeah. Michael, why do you think Bill Belichick hasn't reached out to JC Jackson? What uh, pro day uh, at the division three or two school is he currently <laughs> at? And uh, do you see them franchise tagging him or, uh, and then getting a, deal done later on well i think you're assuming they haven't i mean look i i i I mean i'm sure at this point everybody knows what jc jackson wants and so if you're an executive in the league you kind of have an idea if you're the green bay packers you know what Devontae adams is asking for right you know what jc jackson if you're the patriots is asking for you're not going to meet that price because you sit there and say look i'll just franchise him for a year and we'll go from there like that's it that's where you get to what's the point of engaging when all you're going to do is you're, you can't even you can't even come to a, an agreement that you are in agreement that you want to have a conversation. So it's like you're wasting your time. I'll just franchise them and move on. That's my approach. I think that's what's happening up in New England. I think that's what's happening with Devontae Adams. I mean, they know he wants to make over 20 million a year. What's their answer to that? Well, that's probably six million more, four million more than the next receiver. 
you know, we'll just franchise you. We'll go on. And yeah, look, but, can... but, but, Lombo, with the voided year contract thing, a 15, what is it, 17? What is the... Uh, the tag. The tag for a wide receiver, 16? Uh, for wide, more than that, wide receiver, it's higher. I think it's 19. Nine, so, like, instead of getting that mandatory on the books for next year, wouldn't it be smarter for Devontae to get one of those four-year kick-the-can-down-the-road almost deals, don't you yeah. think? I think so, and I think ultimately they'll, they'll probably go to his agent and say, look, we're going to franchise you. Here's the deal we would give you in lieu of that and try to get some sense of it, bringing it back to a number. And that's, I'm sure that's what the – but there's no sense in doing it, trying to do a deal now when the league year is so far away because nobody's going to say, okay, let's do that. They think they're going to get more money. Yeah, and, they're, and everybody is saying on that conversation, look, my market is – now, you know, nobody's supposed to tamper, but we all know that's not true. But my market is going to be somewhere here, right? You know, my market's going to be somewhere. I'm hearing I'm going to get this. I'm hearing no, nobody's going to ever. They all have plausible deniability. But you're negotiating against a ghost. So what's the sense of negotiating? Mr. Kim, I love that one. And that's one of my, I got to go run it by the board. You know what I mean? I go run it by the board. I'll come back. There's no board. I am the board, but I'll blame, I'll blame the board. Uh, blame the ghost is definitely a move. It's 18 million for the franchise tag, by the way. So okay. 18 million is the franchise tag for wide receivers. Go ahead, AJ. And Mike, I, I'm around a lot of Browns fans here in Ohio. And, and especially this past week, I was around a lot. And they all asked me, like, what are the Browns going to be? What are they doing? And they all had different opinions on what Baker Mayfield is and how the Browns may feel about them. Like, what do you think the, Brown, the Browns are feeling right now with their team, like their whole roster? And like, what's Baker going to do? And who's gonna, who else may be there in that quarterback room? You know, if I was at the Browns, I would say, look, you know, we know who Baker is. We got to run the right screen. We got to run the right system for him. We know his limitations. He was hurt last year, had a better year two years ago. But unless we can replace him, why are we getting rid of him? Like, who's better than him that we're going to get right now? It's hard. I mean, Kevin Colbert was sitting the same thing about Mason Rudolph, you know, and he's only played in six games. He's like, until we get somebody better, and I don't know how I'm going to get somebody better, he's the guy. And so that, to me, would be the approach I would take with Makefield. I wouldn't extend them. The worst thing they could do is is extend them on hope and circumstances as opposed to knowing. I would just let pick up the fifth year. You play it out. Let's move forward. We'll keep making the team better around you. And when we get to next year, we get to next year and see where you are. But I would also think about drafting a quarterback. I think the Raiders and the Browns last year in the draft should have drafted a quarterback, partly because they knew this problem was coming up. You know, what are they going to do with Derek Carr? I think what they should do with Derek Carr is extend them, whatever it is, extend them out. So, yeah, so Josh McDaniels has two years to work with Carr to find out what he really has in him to see if he wants to go forward. I think that's the same thing they should do with Mayfield. Uh, Jarvis Landry basically, you know, saying, I get me out of here. Does that mean anything to you, you think? Or? <laughs> well, he doesn't have any guaranteed money. So, you know, naturally, this, this is the time where the, this is the season of complaints. I mean, you know, if you, have a, if you have a complaint department, you're very busy this time of the year. The phone's ringing, you know. Everybody's complaining. I mean, Kyler Murray's complaining. Everybody's complaining. I, I have no guaranteed money. Well, what happened to all the guaranteed money we gave you from the three years before? That doesn't count. Well, I'll have any this year. Okay. So I, I just think you, you as a general manager, you just got to just block out the noise and say, OK, here's where it is. And be honest with the player. Like you can't lie to the guy. You can't say, oh, Jarvis, I'm going to come do your deal and then not do it. You got to be dead honest. And even if it's conversa- the conversation is a little uncomfortable, you got to make it. You got to say, hey, look, Jarvis, you know, you're in the last year. We'll see where this goes next year. Jarvis, how's the family? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are you saying? Hey, look, I mean, this isn't a lemonade stand. We're not just giving out everything to everybody here. <laughs> Listen, don't be – hey, if you're at a lemonade stand where they're handing stuff out, you should at least tip pretty much. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead, Ty. Michael, I don't know if anyone gives a shit because they stink, but what are the Texans going to do? There's reports coming out now that they're going to get rid of Tunsil and Brandon Cooks, and then the Deshaun Watson stuff is getting pushed back a, a month. Like, what, what are the Texans actually going to do going forward? That's a great question. I mean, you know, obviously they're trying to reduce their cap. Tunsil's been a major disappointment for all they gave up for him and then what they paid him. He hasn't played anywhere near what they hoped he would. So, and Cooks has been a guy, and Cooks has been a guy that, that has been a good player. You know, they had a lot of offers at the deadline to see if they could trade him if they want to hang on to him. But I think one thing by hiring Lovey, at least they know who they're going to be on defense. They're going to play Lovey style of defense, one gap scheme, get up the field, play Tampa, play three, play a lot of zones. So they can build a defense around that. Offensively, I think what they got to analyze is where are they going with Mills? What kind of team do they want to have around Mills? And, and not get caught up in, 
and hey, you know, we're going to let, let's have a two year plan, not have a one year plan. And for me, it's been hard to see a plan down in Houston because they signed a bunch of guys last off season, then they got rid of a bunch of those guys they signed. So it kind of was start stop. I think that they need to do is figure out two years. Here's what we're going to do for the next two years. Hey, this is already too much Texans talk, but let's <laughs> let's do a little bit more here. Uh, you know, Casario from uh, yeah. mm-hmm. sure. Oh yeah. Hey, he's pr- he's he's listen. If it works, it works. Does whatever. He's in on the headset and he's coaching and everything. Did you know that? Did you expect that? Of course that? I did. Yeah. How do you feel no, about that? No, I didn't that? expect that. I, I hate it. I despise it. I think it's completely wrong. I think there is a place oh, for the general manager to to stay in. I think you should never go into the locker room with as a GM. I mean, that's the players' domain. That's where they work. That's where they live. That's where they talk. And that's where they make fun of you and you understand it. Right. And so and the same thing with respect to a coach, like you don't want to be in the press, but unless the coach wants you there. Now, Nick is really, you know, Nick on Sundays during the Patriot games, he would be in the box because he was helping Josh McDaniels with personnel groupings and coverages and all those things. But once he became a general manager, once he assumed a different role in leadership, he can't do that anymore. I mean, he can't or else make yourself the head coach. Like, then you become the head coach. Yeah, that's like, like Bill, right? Yeah. Bill's the only guy that's ever been able to do it, though. He's the only one. And, and so, like, to me, you've got to be able to remove yourself from there because you're in charge of the program at 30,000 feet, not on game deck. And I think that's really ultimately what he should do. I, I, I really have a hard time understanding when you cross back over into that area. Go ahead, Tom Diggs. Uh, Lomba, you talked about Colbert with the Steelers and the Browns complimenting the quarterbacks that they have now. Um, is there like any of the court free agent quarterbacks with flaws out there? Like Jameis, Wentz will be out there, Jimmy G, Mitch, maybe your boy Mitch. Like, do you see any fits between those guys with an organization that's looking to upgrade their quarterback? You know, I could see Jimmy G being interesting to them because I think one thing you got to remember about the Steelers is a lot of Italians, uh, lot, yeah, well, lot of Italians lot, in Pittsburgh, a lot of Irish, a lot of Irish, and and they want to get back. I think you know when Bruce Arians got fired. <laughs> years ago, he, he was fired because he didn't run the ball enough based on what the Steeler front office really wanted. I mean, Mike Tomlin told him, hey, you're not going anywhere. And then two weeks later, they had a discussion and, and the Steelers wanted to get back to what they believe is the essence of who they are as a football team. Nice. I think you're going to see that this year. I think you're going to see them get back to being a run team, not as much in terms of always in shotgun, more play action. And I think Garoppolo fits that description. I think that's what they're going to look for, is somebody that can run their style of offense that they want to get back to, which is doesn't mean they're not going to throw the ball. It just means that they're not going to always be in shotgun and get rid of the ball in 1.6 seconds as Ben did in the last couple of years. Jimmy G could do that in Indianapolis, too. That'd be sweet. Yep. That's right. That'd be sweet. He did that in Indianapolis, too, with old Jonathan Taylor. Najee Harris is a guy. Uh, last yeah. question from us, because I know you're very busy, and we appreciate your time, Lombo, every time we get to chat with you. Uh, there's some quotes coming out of Gunta Gunta's press conference. And I think one that I got to see on a tweet from Ari Mirov was fascinating to me. Basically, he said the hiring, yeah, GM Brian Gunta Gunta says bringing Tom Clemens back as the QB's coach is an example of how the team is working with Aaron Rodgers on decisions. That's via Ari Mirov of Pro Football Focus at My Sports Update. Now, we are hearing from our sources that LaFleur and Tom Clements met in a, a, a cafe in Los Angeles during Super Bowl week. Our wives actually saw them meet. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Hawk knows him, saw it happen. So we might have had an inside scoop on this and didn't tell anybody. But him coming back, getting hired, is them working with Aaron Rodgers. Do you see that being like a, a an olive branch? And how hard do you think it is to kind of let the ego and pride aside and change your ways as an organization? You know, I, I sent an article to you, and I think it's really relevant in this conversation. Roger Martin used to be the head of head of business at the University of Toronto Dean, uh, School. He was the dean, and he wrote a really good column using Aaron Rodgers as the forefront of the column, basically saying really talented people, they want to be included. They want to feel inclusion. They, they want to be asked questions. They want to be feel like they're part of it. That you Their compensation package isn't as important as feeling like they're included. I think Brady was the same exact way. And so I think finally it's hit the Packers that inclusion is important to what Aaron Rodgers wants. And you could say, well, Rodgers is just a player. He should just play. 
Well, no, he's the MVP two years in a row, and we better include him in some of the things we want to do because if he's not going to buy into this, then it's only going to be hard. It's like me saying I want to draft player Y and the head coach hates player Y. Well, <laughs> you know, the head coach is never going to play player Y, and it's got, you've got to work together. And I think part of that is what Martin wrote in the, in the Harvard Business Review uh, article is basically you have to understand that and change how you deal with talented people during this time period in, 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 in football and in business. You love that type of shit, huh? That's like your type of thing, that, that type of psychology. It's really, really important. I think it's really important because, you look, you know, the problem is, is we see the game through our eyes. I grew up in football in the 80s and the 70s. That's a completely different game today. And the players you're dealing with are completely different. And so you better adapt to the players. You know, you better adapt to you've got this guy who got a huge bonus. You better figure out how to how to resonate with them, because the way your old methods are no longer the new methods. And I think this is perfect. Rogers is the perfect example of this. Well, I hope it all works out. We still don't know what he's going to do, much to the chagrin of everybody that was watching yesterday, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I think we learned a lot from our conversation with him yesterday, just like we learn a lot from you every time we chat with you. Thank you so much, Paisan. We appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Hey, you look good, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Lombardi. Yeah. AJ. What's up? Harvard Business Review Journal, dude. You ever read it? Fucking Is didn't that what he so. sent you? Huh? He sent you that article from... From there? Yeah, and I knew it existed. Yeah. You read it. Yeah, and you definitely read that article. I seen. You read the Harvard Business. Yeah, what are you talking about? What do you see how bright the photos were and like the headline? It was like uh, oh, yeah. gorgeous. It was really good. I mean, it said, makes sense, though. What he said makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was an entire study. And when I said you love that type of shit to Lombardi, there's that section of people who love the psychology of like why things are everything. And I, I dabble in that as well. I enjoy learning about why people are the way they are. But I, I, I like the fact that. Very intelligent people are spending actual hours and time trying to study the new model of human that is happening in the world that we're in that is much different than it used to be. Like, I enjoy hearing that and learning that, but there's a lot of old school folks that are, you know, I don't think, well, hey, fuck, I don't care. You know, there's a lot of that. Yeah. There's a lot of that that happens. So the fact that yeah. Gunta Kunz and Mark Murphy and them, like, I think being able to, and, and but we don't know what's going on by the scenes. The Tom Clements hire, obviously, is taking place and everything like that. And Kenny's redone and there's voidable years. And they brought in Randall Cobb last year. It, that's not an easy thing to put your pride away. And, you know, especially when there's no ownership and you are the, hey, we are the program. You know, you can have that mindset. It's, that takes a lot as well, I think. And that should be mentioned and chatted about. I agree. I think it definitely takes a lot for them to, to do these these little things. Or I mean, not even little things, just to in, include them. And yeah, you're bringing in Tom Clements. You know, your quarterback loves that guy and it plays well when he is there. But you're right. Like you do have to kind of set your ego aside too and say, all right, we're doing this. Like if our quarterback didn't want him, would we have gone out and, and gotten this guy? Maybe I don't know. He was out of coaching. He's been hanging out. He's he's been enjoying his life the last couple of years. So What's he doesn't doing? have to coach. He's coming back because he wants to. Tom Clements smoking dope. Hi. I don't think so, but I don't know. I, I don't keep a camera oh. on him. PK. <laughs> oh, Clemens, my, did he do PK? Did what? he do uh, Poncho Karma? He's a, he's a CFL legend and Notre Dame legend, too. Oh, oh, he probably does do PK. Was he one of the four oh. Budai? Buddhist? Buddhist at the dinner? Oh, I don't know. Notre Dame. Question. Did you know about said Buddhist dinner? I did not know about said Buddhist dinner that he left five guys waiting at his gate for. Yeah. Were you was, pissed you weren't invited? That was awesome. That was awesome. I was okay. I don't know. I don't know if I would have had a lot to say at that dinner. <laughs> well, a lot think, of listening. A lot of yeah, listening. Yeah. A lot of listening to Buddhist dinners. <laughs> What are you saying about Notre Dame, dude? Okay, not everybody's Catholic. Either, well, I mean, back then, <laughs> depending on how old True. this lad is, I doubt he's Buddhist. I assume there's some Catholics that have evolved. You know, they're, Absolutely. they're not evolved. I'm not mentioning it as a good move, but I'm sure there has been some Catholics that have maybe thought at one point, this feels like bullshit, and then try something yeah, else. Change there's, sides. There's a chance that that has happened. I'm not saying that this, you know, Buddhist Notre Dame quarterback legend mm -hmm. Clements guy did that, but I'm just saying maybe he was a Buddhist. Also, uh, Catholic high school. He's Catholic. Okay, so <laughs> that does stand up and yeah. kneel down. But to your point, right. he was not at the Buddhist day. No, no, no. Ron Communion Ron every Sunday. I believe Ram Das was flipping as well so you oh know, you really? were right oh ram das i read that yes yeah. right. right ram das was a part of our yeah, book club. oh yeah. yeah oh we gotta we gotta uh the next time he comes on he's gonna tell us how he broke his toe yeah that was a promise he, he made promised it I, we assume sooner than later he's gonna make his decision sure, so if he comes on maybe it'll be either after his decision's already made or he makes his decision which would be very mm -hmm. cool um 
And also, we got to decide where all the money's going for the uh, reader advocacy group oh, for all the yeah. t-shirt sales. So there's a lot to still check off. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when everybody says that we learned nothing here, say maybe they're right because there's a lot of shit we still have to figure out. <laughs> yeah. That's something we just remembered actually. Some list. AJ, love that you're back, dude. What what happened? Why weren't you here yesterday? Uh, well, we were supposed to get back in the morning. Uh, you know, cruises, things happen. I guess the, uh, the, the ship had to make a had to make a quick jaunt to the Turks and Caicos to drop somebody oh, off nice. that was that was ill. So then they flew them back to like Miami area, I guess. So that that delayed the ship getting back by like six eight hours. Jesus. So I got in last night instead of yesterday morning. Okay, so ship supposed to go back to dock. Need to get person back quicker than what boat can get there because the evolution of travel, if you do recall, it used to boat everywhere, okay. you know, across mm -hmm. sea. You wanted to go Europe. That, okay, you're signing up for a seven, eight month affair. Need That's a right. Okay, Santa you're going Maria. out there. But now, so they stopped, they took a little bit of a detour to get said person on plane to get back quicker. Yeah, I guess so. We didn't, a lot of people didn't even know it at the time until they started making the announcement like that, hey, we're going to be delayed getting back. But yeah, the instead of, the last stop going straight back to Florida and, you know, driving for the boat for a day and a half, whatever it is. Yeah, they just stop and drop him and do all that. And then he's back and doing all right, I guess. So that, that, Okay, that yeah, here we go. Good decision by the cult crews. Good decision. Yeah. yeah. General Bob was just a little too hungover and he had to get back. Yeah, did you need IV? <laughs> I, bro, Jesus. he, you and he, okay, and I was watching a little bit throughout the week on Instagram, the Hawk family, the Carpenter family. I feel like this is maybe the only thing I've ever heard of that is where you are trapped amongst boosters of a cult and you are the zoo animals walking around where everybody loves. It seems like you guys have a great time on this cruise ship every single year. Is that an accurate depiction of the cult cruise you go on? Yeah, this was the 15th year that they have done this. So, yeah, it's crazy. They love it. You guys love it every single year. That seems like a nightmare for you, for everybody. But instead, it's not. How does that happen? No, it's cool because people there, like a lot of them have been on. Uh, multiple cruises through, so they kind of know the deal and everyone just kind of hangs out zeke's there zeke like they do this auction thing like we did it when you came to our event we auctioned you off as a horse you know yeah where you ride in the horse race at the end yeah. like zeke's i think zeke sold his horse like that he would ride in the thing sold for like 65k and zeke just matched it on the spot like, okay cool here we go like that's how they raise Damn. a ton of money doing stuff like that so it's a great time you're saying every single year yeah it's Look like uh, at you know, this. It's like spring break for adults, and then we get to tag along. How many OHs? Oh, there's quite a few. Do you yeah. answer all of them, or you leave them ducks on the pond like you do for me, and that's why Ohio State stinks all of a sudden? No, I answer. I answer a lot of them. A lot, but not, not all. So you don't. You go IO with the claw, like I O C. <laughs> you know what I mean? IO Shaka, dude. Exactly. IO, bro, out here at sea. Yeah, look at those water slides, man. We rode all of them multiple times. All the way at the top there. Oh yeah, it's a long walk. Damn, speed sled. You and Carpenter race and do push-ups up there? <laughs> no, I mean, we, we, we covered a lot of ground Perfect riding, riding those, roller, roller, is, those water slides, I should say. Was it great to be back around Bobby Carpenter in the wild, or is this, you know what I mean? Of course. It was awesome. Bobby's four kids were there as well, so our kids got to, to pal around. Like, they would, they would not have had – our kids wouldn't have had as good a time if Carpenters were not there. We were very thankful that they were there and they were able to hang out. Thank you, Thank Carpenter. Thank you, General Bob and Pam. Okay, all right, let's get to a break. Uh, let's wrap up hour two here on the other side of this break with some phone calls on the 5 Energy phone line, one 4 McAfee. It's great to have you back, man. Happy you survived. Hey, I am I am very happy to be back. I did. I, I missed being on here. Nick, congrats. I know you got engaged. Big things happen. Thank, Thank, Thank you, AJ. Very glad. Thank you, AJ. Very nice of you, AJ. Could have said yesterday you skipped work, though. Yeah. Yeah. Stop by. Per usual. Hey, my oh. wife was telling me you should you should call in from like the airport while we were waiting or the bus while we're going to the thing. I'm like, yeah, that would be good. Idea. Why not just call in with a terrible connection and a bunch of noise around me? That makes sense. Yeah, it would have been awesome. Uh, yeah, it would have been, been cool. sweet to see you. Yeah, yeah it would have been cool. Carpenter's probably there too, right? Yeah. Uh huh. That would have been a cool little check in. We would have known you made it. But instead, you looked out for the product. And I appreciate that. You know, low quality audio and video is not, I mean, that is your pet. Yeah, that can, how is that going to help with Aaron? With, you're talking to Aaron, I'm chiming in like a, from a bumpy bus and terrible audio. <laughs> AJ, did you see yesterday? He was given a big time answer and then Shailene's in the back laughing potentially and I'm like oh I don't know what to do here I have I literally stopped him I, it's a big time clip I told him but there's somebody laughing in the background and he said that was a TV and we got him completely off uh, track if you were there you probably would have helped actually because there was numerous times where I was like ah got to stop you there even though you're giving a great answer let me pivot that away you probably would have saved the whole thing I'm saying I, I don't know I, I think you did a great job and I was glad he came on I don't did he say when he will be on next no 
He's in the chapter of making the decision of what's next right now. That's yes. right. Because the offseason doesn't begin until after the Super Bowl, but his cleanse was happening during the Super Bowl. He just got mm. out of his cleanse two days ago. So now the offseason begins. Now's the chapter for him to make his decision. And he says it's going to be quick. has a few calls to make. It has to be before March 8th because of the franchise tag deadline. Boom. We'll be back in four minutes. Can't appreciate, uh, appreciate you enough. We'll see you then. Cheers. All right, so tonight I got uh, Buffalo minus the five or five and a half, wherever you're getting to that. Arkansas money line versus Florida. Vandy plus the four and a half uh, at home against Bama. And UNLV plus the two and a half on the road at Nevada. Yale money line. Michigan State plus seven. Eastern Michigan money line. Charleston money line. Arkansas money line. Nova plus two and a half. Miami minus four. San Diego State plus two. Bama minus four. CS Bakersfield money line and Nevada money line. So I'm going to give my weekly story when Pat comes on. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Oh, so, this is my bedtime story right now. <laughs> There's a couple refs that you just have it out for, or they have it out for you. And I'm like, before the game, I get the I get the paper, yeah, I look, I see who the referees are. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get a penalty called against me for sure in this game. <laughs> and uh, so, so I'll just say this, Bill McCreary. Where, oh, Wild Bill. We wild fucking Bill. hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, a good dude. he's a good dude. I run into him actually in Pittsburgh all the time. So <laughs> I'm playing in New Jersey, and Bill, there's like a, whatever, they, the other team trips one of our guys, like a blatant call that's missed. I stand up on the bench. What you do is to be an asshole. I stand up on the bench, take my stick over the board. Just boom, 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 boom. I mean, you can hear it through the arena, right? Just boom, boom, boom. Like, come on. It just, it shows them up, right? I'm like, come on. And all of a sudden, I see Bill just look across. He goes, whoo. And he's got like this heavy mustache like this. This mustache just eyeballing me across the way. And I, he looks at me. I'm standing up. I'm banging my stick. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so then... The play goes on, and I'm tying my skates. I'm on the bench. I'm going like this. I bend down. I'm tying my skates. He's like, the top of the boards is right here. My head's down. TV timeout. All of a sudden, I hear, shh. Someone stops right here. And I look up, and Bill McCreary's like eyeball to eyeball. And he goes, he goes, are you showing me up? You want to fucking go? You want to go? And he goes like this. I swear to God, he goes like this. He backs away from me. I grab my mic. He backs away from me from the bench and he goes like this come on come on <laughs> and, and i stand up and i go bill are you challenging me to a fucking fight i'm like you asshole you think i can't if i fight you i'll never play a game in this league again he goes let's go come on let's go tough guy <laughs> and i'm like i don't know my mind is going like in circles i'm like do i fight this guy like come back or what do i have to do like, I'm just like, and like he totally won he totally won he knew i couldn't do anything and i'm just like i just got by i'm like you know what I'm like, fuck you. And I sat down and then it was like, I was like, he totally just dominated me right yeah. there. And then <laughs> the next game, the next game we played, I was taking the opening face off of the game. He's dropping the puck. He's standing there before the puck drop. I look at him, he looks at me. I look at him, he looks at me. And finally I go, hey, Bill. I go, Billy, let's bury the hatchet, man. I'm sorry. I got away from myself <laughs> last game. I go, I got away from myself last game. Like this isn't, I, I don't, I don't treat referees like that. And he goes, no, I did too. I let the, you know, the heat of the moment get the best of me. All right, man. Truce. All right, cool. Truce. Drops the puck by the end of the first period. We're, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> this seems to be a thing with you. This and I run, into, I run into him all the time. He's a great dude, but that's how it is, man. They, he's got to fight his fights out there too to save face. Oh, Rough. Should I have fought him? Yeah. Maybe probably not. Probably not. I mean, pretty good content. You fight a ref, but also like um, probably bad for our brand. So. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Uh, hour two here, the Pat McAfee Show <laughs> on Sirius, wrapping up in 28 seconds. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hope you're having a good one. I want to let you know, after this six-minute break, there's going to be the greatest hour of radio in the history. Hell Big yeah. Time. I'm talking 54 minutes of absolute magic Oof. and chaos. I can't wait to be a part of it. And I hope you will return, you know, right here on Sirius XM Woo. for hour three. Right, AJ? Right. Are we out?
Yes, we are. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Hey, Mad Dog stopping by the set though at Radio Row was awesome. He brought the juice. What did? Don't screw him. What did you? What did? Uh, what don't did blow off Sean. <laughs> don't blow him off. Don't, don't blow, blow off Adam. <laughs> and AJ. He won't blow him off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no chance. No chance, Mad Dog. Pat's got you. And I did, by the way. Yeah. Oh, Shine. Yeah. Hell yeah. Got to meet Shine. Did. It was awesome. Watching Mad Dog, too. Oh, dude. It was nice to meet him in person. I mean, I had one phone call with him. You know, chatted with him yeah. as we mm -hmm. got on the channel. The juice. Brings the juice. This brings the juice. LeBron, maybe. Friends. He wants the football, turn. football brings the juice. I know. veg. I have veg. <laughs> so it's like, he's so busy. He's got to be so busy, though. He, he just sits there and he goes. Yeah. yeah. They just wind him up and he just sits down at that couch normally on a day to day basis with a headset on and fucking goes. And he's been doing it for what, 50 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And he does have the Francesa thought. Like, I've seen clips of him just destroying callers. It is. He takes a, a lot of calls. Yeah. And well, he kills them. <laughs> listen, we remember, hey, you weren't a part of this yesterday, AJ, but. I thought a lot about the callers during my uh, my break out there in the islands. We're yeah. gonna be nicer to them this season. Are you? Didn't you already do the same thing yesterday and hold, and yeah. make somebody continue to act like they didn't they couldn't hear you? I did, and I apologize to Aaron. Obviously, I believe his name was Aaron in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and I'd like to let him know that he was the one that spurred my remembrance of my thoughts oh. during the island, yeah. where I was like, "Oh wait, wait, we're being nice to callers this year." That was decided on some vitamins while staring at. Whales whaling in the ocean for a couple mm -hmm. hours. Yeah, plus it is nice. I mean, one of the, the Steve, the first time it happened, that call, you know, it's a commercial now. He's like yeah. genuinely part of the show. Yeah. Just because that happens, that's all in jest. It doesn't mean we're being mean. How about the, don't do this to me, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one hurt. That one hurt right here. It's an all time moment. That one hurt right here. <laughs> oh, don't do this to me, man. <laughs> I felt Has so anyone bad. heard from old Steve and seen, like, is he okay? Yeah. I've seen him tweet. I've seen him tweet about uh, it. He's, he's called back. Has he? Have we talked to him? I, I believe we talked to him. See, that's what I'm after. talking about. Being nicer. I don't even remember. See, that's, see, we got to give the heads up. If we know it's him, someone better give us the heads up beforehand. All right. Thank Let's you, see. Man. Maybe there's a Steven on. Steven in Missouri. What's going on, Steven? Hey, Pat, boys. AJ, how we doing? Give him Give him move. Move. Not the wrong. Right, not the same Steve. Wrong Steven. Okay. Wrong Steven. Okay. Yeah, different Steven. He just <laughs> clarified. Yeah, I called yesterday. wasn't able to say my second point. So I thought, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. What was point one? Yeah. You said something you about cut dicks. Him off. Well, I had to go. Yeah, I had to go. Uh, I called about, the, like, asked about that picture. Um, oh, yeah, uh, oh, the OCD uh, guy. This yeah, is OCD yeah. Steve. He had a All right. OCD Steve, yeah, what's going yeah. on, dude? Take a <laughs> How's it going? Um, so, Keep sorry if you guys have already talked about this, but with the Bengals, um, it's obvious they need upgrades on the offensive line. But my question is, uh, is it just that simple? Like, how easy is it to just plug multiple new guys in there? Because, like, the best lines have to work as a unit. Um, oh, can you develop that chemistry and cohesiveness in one off season? Thank you, OCD Steve. So, he called yesterday. You weren't here because you were in Turks and Caicos for an extra day. But, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the picture that you threw a football at and broke over here, you know, when the ball slipped off your pinky, that one that's a claw, and you try to throw it at Tone's head? Mm -hmm. yeah. He said he can't take it anymore. He said he can't watch. Yeah. He needs that thing to be straightened. He said, I got two things. Uh, my OCD is great. Now, I don't know how he looks at this. But I think it's because everything is clearly yeah. organized. Yeah. That's right. The method. Yeah. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, if he is, if that picture is bothering him, there's no way that desk will bother him watching the show. As it scans from Jeez. left to right, <laughs> it is a collection of awesome. From the Brock Lesnar blend that is available at beardedbutchers.com to Jared Lorenzen. Memorabilia, rest in peace. Presley Harvin, Ray Mysterio, a book club, a legendary photo in which a deal was made in Omaha. Yeah. yeah. That was when um, that picture right there behind the hockey stick next to the book club above the five energy phone <laughs> <laughs> and to the right of the uh, Starbucks cup. That is the exact moment where uh, me and Fandle had the, uh, all mm -hmm. right, the, agree to terms. Yeah. That was a pretty big moment. Michael Cole took that photo. I keep going. Thank you, Cole Train. Michael Cole took that photo, yeah, out of his phone. He looked like a, an old, like a dad, too, taking it. Like, doing that whole, it was <laughs> awesome. Was down. It was really cool. Because I told him, I was like, hey, I think I'm about to have a pretty big, I think I'm about to go have a pretty big phone call. And I didn't tell him what it was. He was like, oh, everything's always, like he, you know, Michael Cole. 
everything's always such a big phone call. Like, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. And then as I was sitting back there, he like took a phone. It was like very nice of him, very cool of him. I miss that man, by the way. I can't wait for Friday. I see him in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Brock Lesnar's going to be there as well. Ooh. It's good collection stuff. AJ. Yeah. yeah. It is. It does look weird seeing clips or pictures from back in the day when you don't have nearly as much on them. Well, that's what, when we go to the igloo, because it's going to be cool. Um, I don't know <laughs> what we're going to do about the desk. I don't know what no, we're going to do. No, no, no. You start anew. Well, I, I guess kind of. No, no, no. You can pack that up. You can bring that over to the igloo. You, well, we're taking the head, headphones. For, we're taking that piece of the rafters and taking it over to the other one, you mm -hmm. know, for Brock. I mean, you take the essential items with you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there will be, obviously, they'll make the trip. Yeah, take, like, the ashtrays full of stuff and the trash and all that. Well, yeah. Oh, that's just CBD, remember. Let's not be yeah. telling any lies. All right, yeah, no. Like, I'm just saying. Does but, random red candle up there in the front make a trip? Yep. Well, that was brought in because there was random gas leak. Right? Yeah, yeah, I remember it smells like poop in here. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. was, no, that was our canary. We had the Washington Commanders uh, Stadium th problem here uh, for that's like right. a week or two. Mm -hmm. I mean, AJ's want to talk. That bookshelf isn't neat. That's that so no, Number three, right? I mean, some vertical book. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks i've had a chance to really build my crew build my following build my audience and ridiculous what am i supposed to do so i'm supposed to look at something that i can definitely afford and say nah <laughs> is that what i'm supposed to do the pat the mcafee show starts in three, three two, two one, one. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here on this glorious Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. The same day that John fucking Ham will join Hockey Talk tonight at 8.30 Eastern. Hell yeah! Have a final hour here on Sirius XM. That's right, tonight at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, 2.30 Hawaiian time on YouTube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk. It'll be Stanley Cup champion, Michael Rupp. What? It'll be Bubba Gumpino, the Canadian sensation. What? It'll be Pies on engaged extraordinaire, Nick Moraldo. What? And the Hamaconda, the Hammer, Don Draper, John Ham will be joining them. That's superstar booking. I can't wait to watch. Hell yeah. Thank you, Pat. Beautiful introduction. Great plug. Shout out to Rupper for the booking. Pumped to talk to the Hamaconda. Hockey's happening right now, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Bees are hot. No, they are not. Yeah, we are. They stink. We're winning stink. without Marshan. Uh, don't even talk. Red Wings are the worst team <laughs> yeah, in the fucking league. We're coming for that playoff spot. We're coming for the you're Bees, not. actually. Yeah, you're I'm not coming, coming for the playoff yeah, spot. You're not. Yeah. Hey, you know, how long has Eisman got to be there for you guys Seriously. to continue to fucking suck? This is the year, all right? We build this year, <laughs> next year, Stanley Cup. Simple. You're not even going to the Not with the fucking health and healthy Jackie Aces in Vegas. I mean, it's basically <laughs> picture Your goalkeeping will kill you in the playoffs. No, once again. No, no, no. Sorry, Ty. Yeah, you guys got rid of math. Cool. You guys are fucked. Nah, this rumor has it. Jackie there. Aces or Stoner might actually put, put the pads on and go in between the pipes. I heard oh, the Avalanche have a toxicity issue in the locker room. That's why they're oh, going to stink. Oh, 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 yeah. Really? yeah, that's what I heard. The Colorado Avalanche got, you know, nothing but toxic problems yep. in the locker room coming from... What happened? A family member of you. Whoa. Wow. That's what I've heard. So they got no fucking shot. Yeah. You might as well kill every other team in the league other than the Pittsburgh Penguins. Put them on sure, prime yeah. time every single evening. Saturday yeah. they're on ABC. Fucking prime time. How you doing? Keep moving. How yeah, the Avs have a problem because the Bruins just wiped the floor with them and the ice. Well, that's because they're disgusting. locker room. No, no, it was after we beat them when they started yelling at each other. Anyway, Sidney Crosby scored his 500th goal against the Philadelphia Flyers, who are still an NHL team. It surprised me, too. You know, Man, they stink. Yeah, they are they so are bad. bad. Well, it's an original uh, six. You know, you got to honor those teams. Yeah. So. No, you Thank don't. Thank you, Connor. Well, I saw your guy, though, uh, Pat. I don't know how I caught it, but I saw Pulisic uh, score a goal. Oh, yeah, he's oh, yeah. Yeah. I just want to let everybody know, I'm no longer on the Pulisic. He's the greatest player of all time train. What? No what? longer on it. What do you mean? He's going to have to earn it a little bit more. Yeah. All right. I agree. No. The gritty? You didn't like the gritty? Yeah, I agree. I love the gritty. Okay. He looked clean. I mean, it was a great goal. <sighs> Nasty goal. Bend that thing side panel. Love what he's doing. But his performance for the U.S. men's national team in the negative 45-degree weather. Mm -hmm. 
can't happen. Nope. Not, I can't. Hey, listen, I like these scoring goals for Chelsea. Okay, it's good for soccer. It's good for Chelsea. It's good for everything. But we need you scoring when you're representing the red, white, and blue. You, okay. do, it. you, you do it for club and country, my friend. No. no. Fuck the club. Do, do it for, for the country. country. Yeah. He shows up All on right. the biggest stage, not some Mickey Mouse qualification game. Okay. Uh, uh, Mickey Mouse, that's the soccer Lombardi, pal, yeah. and we're going to win that thing. Well, yeah, I mean, they're already in. He doesn't give a shit about the qualification. They're not. Already we need in. that fucking guy to play 90 minutes plus, too. He can't Every be game. coming in and fucking, hey, I had a great three minute spurt. We don't care. Best player in the world fucking play 90 minutes plus and we're still a team Pulisic I mean listen, oh, yeah. still team Pulisic like but every time I say he's the greatest soccer player on earth and then he goes out and does what he does I have to fucking you know say oh I guess I don't know soccer. did he struggle <laughs> did he struggle I don't know you're gonna need him because McKinney got hurt really bad the what other day. McKinney. Adam McKinney got oh, hurt Weston you piece of shit are you <laughs> kidding me when are we fucking getting DeAndre Yedlin back yeah, hey, what he's, is he's the there. there? He's there. He's there. Okay. Isn't he hurt? What I heard, the Columbus crew taking on Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona is yeah. coming to town? <laughs> what? Stop. Martha better get ready because that's going to be a dog fight. I'm happy the 2022 season of PMS Live has hit all of our talking points in hockey <laughs> and in soccer mm -hmm. in just the first couple of days. I mean, good for us. Hey, here, we go. we had it. here we go, boys. Everybody thought we lost our hockey talk and nope. our soccer talk. Mm -hmm. I don't think so at all. We were able to hit all of the bangers and run it back once again. Good for us. Everybody thought we lost it during Hawaii. We got the Hamaconda on that hockey sure. talk. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Look at us. Acting. Huh? Acting. Acting. We're in that world now, too. Baseball's dead forever, you know? No, they're coming back. We predicted they're that. Back. They're coming back. They're coming back. Oh, yeah, what's the, where, right? where are they at right Progress. now? Progress. I don't know. We should call the jet in to take off or whatever. Shh. Jet's been ground for quite some time, sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had meetings, and they said it was a step backwards. No, so the players in exactly. the MLB had a meeting, and they should be, if, you know, catchers... And pitchers are supposed to be important here pretty soon. I mean, obviously, they're we already supposed that. to report. Oh, of course, no. yeah, they're already supposed to be there. Yeah. We knew that. And uh, now they're just saying they're only going backwards in negotiations. It's not good. And MLB, I mean, none of us knew I was still alive. None of us knew anybody that watched. Mm -hmm. None of us really understood how it continued to go. I guess the big markets kept it alive there for long in the local market. John Ham's the big baseball fan. Is he? He's a big yeah. hockey Saint, guy. St. Louis guy. I know we. Are, well, the Cardinals had a couple were, of good He's in that movie, uh, Million Dollar Arm, about yeah, the was. Pirates getting mm -hmm. the couple guys from India. Was he a scout? Yes. He was. He found them. Yeah. He can just hear it. Hammer's got a good eye. Oh, yeah. I can ask him what was like, uh, working speaking for Bob Nutting. Sports we should talk about. There's breaking news. Maybe we should have Marty and McGee on because the Daytona 500 beat the NBA All Star game by 41%. Whoa. <laughs> How about it down here in Daytona? You know what I mean? It's, did they expect that? Well, I, I assume everybody thinks the fucking Super Bowl and NASCAR is going to do its thing, but I, I, the NBA All-Star game is, you know, Steph Curry put up like 50 or something like yeah. that. LeBron was showing up with tequila. I yeah. mean, it was all of the stars of the NBA. And these sports, you know, they do their All-Star game in the middle of the season, and I honestly believe they do it to, like, tell people, hey, we, we exist. You know, like, I, like, here's all of our stars – in one setting, you'll hear interviews, you'll see spectacles, there'll be a bunch of famous people here, there'll be a lot of, it'll be a social media takeover, like, hey, remember, football's over, now it's time for the NBA. Hockey did it, you know, like, hockey did their three-on-three -three tourney, all the best players. Somehow, Sydney, I mean, they just are yeah, terrible at was... marketing. What happened? I don't know, but hockey's like, hey, we exist. That's kind of what I think mm -hmm. the All-Star games are when they're in the middle of the season. So I'm not sure the NBA that has done any ratings really ever at all because I think they're a social media um, uh, league. I don't think they expected maybe to beat NASCAR, but 41% is a lot of eyeballs watching people turn left down there in the Super Bowl in NASCAR, AJ. Yeah, it really is. When you say the NBA is more about like social media and clips and stuff, but how does that benefit the commissioner and all of the TV deals and stuff? Do they work that in? So I've, you know, we've thought shop this, brainstorm this. Mm -hmm. They have to have, do you remember whenever we were, um, we were popping up like random sponsors in middle of moments that we thought potentially <laughs> were going to get clipped? Okay. Yeah. We were doing that. That was some, because how do you benefit off a live show that is probably going to get clipped? I think the way to do it is by popping up ads in the middle of it. And now granted, 
we don't have to do that type of shit anymore because shout out to who just popped shout over my out head there. Out. You know what I mean? Like you kind of pick and choose. But I think they have to figure out how they can profit off of their clips because they are a clip league. I mean, that's just how it is. So as things are happening that are going to get clipped, I think they should have somebody that is out there getting sponsors in that thing live so they can still boom, boom. Because when people rip that and post that, it's like 13 seconds after it happened. So nobody like ripping it, putting an ad on it or doing something like that is going to take so much time. In the moment's already passed, somebody else already has it out there. So I think in real time, they have to figure out how to get ads or product placement in it. I personally, that's how I think Business-wise, they would have to do it. With that being said, I don't know shit about fuck. I don't know how they profit off of being a socially dominant, social media dominant league, which they definitely are. I keep up with the NBA via social media. I watch clips. I feel like I've seen James Harden do his thing this year. I've seen Kevin Durant do his thing. I haven't turned on a game once. No. So they're never going to get me as a right. They, I think they just, that's the kind of brainstorming I think they should be doing, but I don't think they really worry much at this point. Yeah, probably not. I, I mean, it sounds like their commissioner at least seems to be pretty good. The players seem to have a good relationship with him. So, I mean, I don't know because I don't, I don't know a lot of people that watch a ton of regular season basketball. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. just the clips. So, how do you and profit off the they clips? They get ready for the, like, the late round playoffs. I feel like people are always just banking for that. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's a whole – and then playoff basketball means something if somebody popular's in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even yeah. then, the first round, it's not like a sport where, you know, the bottom seed's going to go on a well, Basketball's not a team game either. They don't market it as a whoa, team whoa, game. Whoa, like, whoa, I was whoa, walking whoa, through whoa. the locker room yesterday. About? It said, whoever, like, it, show, it says the two teams, and then it says they're two stars, like, right in the main advertising for it. Like, the two stars bat on each other before almost they say which teams they play for. Now, I will say the NFL does the same thing. I mean, it was Matty Stafford first. Yeah, that's true. I mean, quarterbacks a lot of times are, are highlighted, but – basketball you know you can get one dude whether you're in college or the nba and that if one dude in college can win you the national championship pretty much and let's very true let's talk about like the nba fan bases the lakers die hard fan base right oh yeah they like die they're bigger the Historic. lakers fan base bigger i think than rams and chargers fan base yeah. for in sure la definitely like, more die hard more loyal more in there because of the amount of success but how many other teams really have that it's all superstar like i became a heat fan for a little bit mm -hmm. whenever lebron went there i became you know what i mean a Cavs fan for a little bit that's kind of their league superstar driven that's why i think the clips they have to figure out how to i was only thinking like boston is the like yeah but even in like like the patriot those cities or at least boston has like their own alley like for the nba there are a bunch of cities that only have uh, NBA sure. teams and like like Portland, Sacramento, Oklahoma City. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma City. Like they strictly have NBA sports fans because that's really the only Memphis. sport that they pro have. Sport. Yeah, yeah, pro sport. And that's like West Virginia football. You know, it's exactly. Like, there's no pro team in uh, in West Virginia. So. Mm -hmm. Alabama, they're not near. Their basketball teams not very good. West Virginia, yeah. we stink. What? Oh, yeah. Press Virginia? What? I think they're one and nine in the last. What? Oh shit! They're not going to be in March Madness. They're not going dancing. No, I don't think so. They'll be in the NIT though. All right, all right, all right. Enough, oh, let's AJ. Go. Okay. Didn't Mich Michigan won the NIT last year? Is that right? All right, let's talk about it. No, Juwan no. Howard smacks dude right in the mouth. How do you feel about it? I know you saw it on the cruise. I assume you and Bobby Carpenter talked about that. <laughs> oh. oh! It's like yeah, sometimes you gotta do that. <laughs> now, what was the entire con like? That was interesting to me, you know, because it is the head coach, and it's the position. I think is why it has become such a a story. I think in the competitive bubble that exists, I've said this numerous times. People hit each other. People fight each other. People say like in when, in the state of competition, like I think more things should be. Let go. And that's why I think I enjoy the state of competition because it's a mindset. It's a mentality. It's you can have the, hey, I want to beat the hell out of you. It, it's allowed and promoted in there. When it's the coaches, I guess that is why you can't. I mean, it can't happen. It can't happen. But also, I mean, incredible face wash. Yeah. Yeah. By, I mean, that was a long yeah. reach through a couple people. Pa. Right on the side of the mouth of that guy, who I, I still don't know who the fuck he is. I guess it's an assistant, assistant coach, assistant, yeah. assistant, yeah. assistant coach assistant, yeah. or whatever. But I mean, that was an that was a scene. That was a scene out yeah. there. I don't think I've seen anything like that in some time. I don't think. No, especially how Juwan like fought to get through people to get over there. It, it almost made me like when you watch it in slow mo. Was he going to go at first to punch him and then maybe just to grab somebody mm. and then he got there and just like you said, face wash. His hand is gigantic, by the way. You know that reach he has. Obviously, he played in the. NBA for 20 years or something, but I don't know if he was like, what do I, I wonder if 
Was that his original target? I know the head coach originally he had issues with, mm -hmm. but then why did he go after that guy and what made him not throw a punch and look at the slap? I don't know. I'm curious. I don't know. I think maybe the little whites all looked the same at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They, I didn't know who the fuck it was. I, I, guard, I guess, is the head coach. Yeah, Greg right? Guard is the head coach. Yeah. And the I'm glad, assistant. Aren't you, I thought they may fire him. Didn't you? Like, I know a lot of people I was yeah. around thought for guess, sure he was fired. So he just got extended. They stink. Right. Yes. So them suspending him the last five games of the season, the rest of the season is the way it was it's ordered. Nothing. But it was five games. I think it also gives them, like, another year, too. Like, Michigan gives them a chance to be like, well, you know, he didn't finish out the year, didn't go, but he's got another. Like, I think that is the whole thing. But you're right. I'm happy they didn't fire him either. Like, yeah, but don't you think they still – I mean, he has a massive contract, like, and I assume they could fire him for cause because of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, so it's uh, like, hey, one of those contract things. If there's ever cause, I would imagine they could put it in play for that. And they, this isn't figure it out. This is the yeah. first time he's like hit somebody, but like there's been a bunch of shit with other Big Ten coaches that uh, he's gotten into since he's been at Michigan. I love so Juwan does not give a fuck about any of those guys. Yeah, His players it, have to love it. Love it. Did you see them? That was the thing yeah. that I thought what everybody would get pissed off about because when your coach does something, like for instance, our West Virginia team. A lot of people were meeting us at the 50 in warmups. Like a lot, like for what, because the way our team was, I think because of like our, there was a lot of those in warmups. You know, there was a lot of that that happened. More so, I think, than in other places. Always throw the helmet on. I'm going to have to get up in here because there is cameras somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not in here, I can't talk to anybody in this locker room ever again. You know, nothing ever came of it. There was always just some, you know, shit talk that took place. It was cool. Like I enjoyed it. But I couldn't even imagine if Rich Rod would have walked up to the front of that thing. <laughs> Just oh. drop the guy. It would have been. They would have been you, a full war. Fair game. Don't you feel like as a player, if you see your coach go after somebody, like, okay, cool, we're going. This is going to be a full blown like uh, yes. Braveheart style brawl right here on the field. That's what exactly my thoughts. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh shit. Okay, so then got, there was one guy that started throwing, but not everybody. There was a lot of people that broke it up. I was almost like impressed by the professionalism. Mm. <laughs> I was like, hey, way to go, because that seemed like a green light. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It felt like that was almost like that could have turned super nasty real quick. Real quick, yeah. yeah. But you know uh, uh, the way it was handled. That's in competition, though. I think there is. It can't be judged as it's judged in real life. You know, like, I, I just don't think it can. Because the, in the other shit that Juwan gets into, like, the state of mind that people have to get into and the competitive, uh, like, stamina you have to have to get to those positions, I just, I feel like, and that's not me giving an excuse for it, but it is like, hey, there's a lot of fucking emotions whenever you're, there's a lot of, you know, competition you're trying to beat somebody. And in sports, you actually see a scoreboard. You actually see everything go on. Where in business, it's kind of talked about behind the scenes and the uber competitive people that are up in the executive levels, they don't really get a chance to see their opponents on a day-to-day -day and whatever you get. So I just think like there is a different view when you're in the competitive world. But if a coach smacks somebody, I was very surprised that it did not turn into a full fucking, here we go. Yeah. I can't wait till those two teams face off again. We see what the handshake look like, looks like after the game. Oh, might not. Bro, Rich Rod fucking going up there. <laughs> By the way, because Rich is – I mean, the guy would – he'd be on a stepper for like four hours in the morning. I think just like so mad. I don't know what he was mad about. But he was, <laughs> his calves were huge, you know, and he was like super intense all the time. If he – I couldn't even imagine if he would have – I think him and Fridge, Ralph Friedgen – at Maryland, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they had a little something where I, I, I believe there was like a, almost something after the game, and I do remember our entire team like, like, all right, are we going here? Like, this is this is pretty awesome because that is, I don't know, I'm surprised it didn't end up that way. It's basketball though, football, basketball, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I, there's, you know what I mean? I, it's a little different mentality, I guess. Yeah, it's for both sides though. Like, if if your coach were to get hit, then it's the oh, yeah. exact same oh. thing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. So this, your coach this, gets hit. By, let's say, think of your coach like Rich Rod got hit by their head coach. You're going to spear that head coach oh, yeah. instantly and take out the whole staff. By the way, even if you didn't love Rich Rod, like mm -hmm. even yeah. if yes. you, you didn't love Rich Rod, like Rich Rod was not a player's coach. Like he was not a player's coach. But really? if, our, if <laughs> <laughs> he was not, he hey, he wins games though. He, he oh, wins yeah. games and I hope he does well at uh, Jacksonville, Jacksonville State. State. He's yeah. at Jacksonville State. He's getting a gig. He, by the way, he'll be. Yeah. Climb back in the yeah. SEC before no time. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez <laughs> is going to be giving speeches about, you know, a lot of motherfuckers thought I was gone. You know, like that whole, he'll be back. But I, if somebody was to hit him, I think our entire team would have been like, all right. So I guess, 
Yeah, that's why that is such a big time conversation piece. Because if it happens again, it's probably going to end up much worse than this one particular did. Well, and then do you see what happened to the head coach at UConn last night? Oh. He got a technical foul, and then uh, right after it, or a few minutes later, he started pumping the crowd up, and they gave him another tech and kicked him out of the game. College basketball is awesome. I, I did not know this was happening yeah, in college basketball. It was great. Just for one of these, and they booted him. The crowd got rolling too. He oh, got him. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't like Lafleur trying to pump up Lambo. Like they got shoot <laughs> right away. I didn't hear Aaron say anything about Lafleur telling Lambo. Yeah. Come on. Come on, guys. Make some noise, dude. <laughs> All right. Come on, guys. Is that how he sounds? I think so. That's in the moment. Like, yeah. yeah. Like in his head, I think, you know. Come on, Let's guys. Fucking go. Come on, Come guys. On. Come on. Noise. Up, Let's start on. down, please. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> some money down, dude. <laughs> yeah. Let's get him off the field. He's so cool looking, man. He is. Not even with those perfect eyebrows. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. When it's cold, he wears that black Fit. Packers vest. Yeah, and then. He's telling the crowd, uh, you know, we're mm -hmm. together. Fucking get up. Come on. Come you on. have a job here. <laughs> Takes all of us. We are assholes. <laughs> Let's go to Owen in New Orleans. What's going on, Owen? Hey, boys. How we doing? Good, Good morning. morning. Good start, Owen. Good start. Good. Hey, I just want to talk about how uh, Zion Williamson, uh, he came out with the season ticket holders to renew for next year. They listed a bunch of names talking about Willie Green. What? Talking about Big Boy Dallas What? Talking about B.I. What? Talking about uh, new T.J. McCollum as to the team. What? And the guy they didn't talk about, Zion Williamson. Is Zion out of New Orleans? Not on the season ticket thing. Wow. That's not good. That's not good. He's your superstar. He was actually painted on a, a wall whenever we went down. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he wasn't even, like, he hadn't even started a game yet. So there was these visions, I think, of the city of Zion being the guy. But the Pelicans, I felt like they were very hesitant this entire time to make him, like, the guy. He Remember, wasn't even announced last whenever they were put on national television strictly because he was playing. And that is where my entire relationship with them started and ended. But I guess behind the scenes, it's just, it, it, I don't like it, AJ. Zion's never going to play basketball. I mean, when he has played, he has looked very good, right? Oh, he just has yes. only played a Ten, few games. Does anybody ever talk to Zion and just, well, I guess not, but like, sounds like he's not talking learned, to me. Learned, yeah. Yeah. Is there any well, they way? They say he's like aloof, like he's not really engaged or what? Detached. I don't know what that, a detached teammate is how JJ Reddick spoke about it. Just kind of doing his own thing. Yeah, JJ, mm -hmm. by the way, that clip on first take yesterday of JJ, whenever he heard that Zion hadn't reached out to CJ McCollum, who got traded to New Orleans, I think JJ, who, you know, Duke guy, former teammate of Zion Williamson's down there in New Orleans, was so pissed. That that like hey yeah. a guy comes to your fucking team you send him a text saying hey welcome to the squad like that's just human he said that's just like being a human so whenever JJ said that I think the entire world reacted and now almost the narrative about the Zion situation I think is kind of yeah it's turning it's kind of turning I think you know what I mean I think it's he's gonna have to talk he's gonna have to come out and talk I think if he wants to change that a little bit I think so and I never feel I hate like the media people are like who's first better answer for themselves you know what I mean like being that but it does seem like now would be a good time for. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe a state of Zion to give a uh, either a, some sort of, you know, like, hey. Or like a highlight. Or just put out like a little like 60 second uh, highlight film of you working out. That's all oh. you got to do. No, not just working out. Maybe like highlights of back whenever he was 14 years old. Sure. Yeah. In South yeah. Kak Kakalaka dunking on little white kids. Yeah, throwing down. And then do like an entire highlight of like him retooling, reshaping, reworking out. He can't wait for his return. It'd be like, okay, this guy still wants to play basketball. Likes basketball because that's kind of what the narrative is now that he doesn't even want to play really and he doesn't want to be a part of the team. Like, that's a bad narrative to have. Well, and like Sham said, I mean, you hear about like the family and like his inner circle. Like, we really don't hear much from him. So, like, how, is he even pulling the strings? He's probably got a lot of people in his ear right now telling him, like, hey, this is what you need to do. And, and he's still super young. So, there's a chance that he's kind of just like, all right, well, yeah, whatever. $180 million is a lot of money. I don't think they're going to give that to him. It's a lot of money. You can't. Doritos and Mountain Dew. Well, yeah, you're right. worried about right. spending 130 on, you know, right. Shaq or Mountain Dew sponsorship? All right. I'm more worried about him buying franchises. Um, let's go through <laughs> what Gunta Kuntz has been talking about today. Speaking of money, I don't know if Zion's going to get $180 million, but Gunta Kuntz did talk at a press conference today about the future of the program. Gunta Kuntz on restructuring Kenny Clark to free up cap space. We touched Kenny's contract, and there will be much more that we touch along the way. This is via Matt Schneider. 
Schneidman, insider and reporter of the Green Bay Packers. Schneidman, you know, always follows along. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always, uh, he's always Locked got in. the goods. Gunther Kuntz, though, is basically saying, yeah, we're going to be restructuring a lot of people's contracts to get us under the cap. But with the voidable years thing they did with Kenny Clark, I think this is good news for the Green Bay Packers and fans of the Green Bay Packers, AJ. I think it's great news, yeah. And if they do, let's say Aaron goes back there and they give him another contract, That'll free up some space this year, won't it? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Was that your takeaway from the conversation yesterday? You th you've you thought he was going to the Packers since the beginning of everything, even last year when he was jumping into waterfalls and everything. You listened yesterday, and you were like, yep, I, I still stand by that? Yeah, I, I watched it a little bit before I came on the show today. I watched the whole thing that you had with him yesterday. Yeah, I absolutely stand by what I've said the whole time. He's going back to Green Bay. And with Gunther Kuhn's mentioning working with Rodgers and restructuring the contracts, it feels like they're going to go ahead and make some moves. So maybe the, the relationship between Aaron and... In the front office, which he spoke well. It, remember, Gunther Kuhn's the first guy he thanked after, yeah. uh, uh -huh. shout out, after winning the MVP. Now they're making plays. They're going all in. We could look back on this, the offseason of Hawaii and Taylor Swift mm -hmm. and the uh, accumulation of information on draft day that dropped. And that could be a real pivotal part of the entire Packers if they go and win a Super Bowl. Yeah, for sure. You alluded to it yesterday. I mean, last year at this time, I think, I, I think a lot of Packers fans probably thought that things would end up getting worked out, but it would be like a last dance, you know, like we saw with Jordan and Jerry Krause, how these oh, guys yeah. fucking hated each other, and it was very apparent. But th today, like, that is clearly not the case, and it kind of does seem that Gunz Kuntz realizes, like, hey, we do need to involve Aaron more, and he's kind of doing everything that he's asked him to do. And how about Aaron describing the conversation he had with Gunta Kuntz or whatever early in the season as being when he and Brett Favre shook hands in yeah. 2009, maybe? Or 15, what, I 2015, think. 2015, whatever year it was. That was a big thing, right? Because wasn't that moment like very Huge, big? huge, yeah. And comparing that situation to the Favre situation, feeling like you're on the outside, but maybe coming back around. I think a lot of things were said yesterday. If you just listen to the guy that came out of a fucking 12-day cleanser out the attic in the basement, which when none of us, I don't think, will ever sign up for. But no, he's back-to-back no. -back MVP, and we are not either. So, he, mm -hmm. you know, he can do whatever the hell he wants. There's some other statements coming out from the press conference. Matt Schneidman is reporting that Brian Gutekun says he doesn't like using a franchise okay. tag. He wants to expend, extend Devontae Adams. The situation is obviously still in flux. Is there a chance? the Packers let Adams walk in free agency? Yeah, possibly. There's a lot of things to be Whoa. determined there. Goons Goons is not going to give away any leverage right now. Obviously, that is something that uh, he would be very dumb to do. But him saying he wants to work out a long-term contract, a lot of people think that depends upon what happens with Aaron Rodgers. He's the best wide receiver in football in a lot of people's minds. He's up for some money. He's due for some money. And if you get him a long-term deal, you can kick the can down the road so he doesn't hit your salary cap as much, which is why I believe he would rather sign him to an extension as opposed to a a franchise tag, which is $18 million next year, and they do not have a lot of money right now at the current time in the salary cap, AJ. Yeah, they don't. And also, going back to what we were talking about earlier, so they, they hire Tom Clements. What if Aaron doesn't go back to Green Bay? And Tom's like, all right, cool. I was just hanging out in L.A. for the last couple of years, enjoying my life. I moved back to Green Bay, and now you're not here. Like, don't you think Tom would be upset? Yeah, I think. What if I Tom? Assume so. Yeah, yeah. What if Tom just retired? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what? Fuck it. I was kidding. Is that a sign? What if we see that? Hey, Tom Clements has resigned from the Packers. We see that like two days from now. Oh, oh no, no, Eric's not going. Oh no! Sorry about it. I'm gonna put that out there, you son of a bitch. Yeah, it feels like he's going back no matter what. Uh, we have more. Zito says from Match Diamond. This was the biggest takeaway to me. Rogers doesn't tell them to hire Clements and then throw deuces out. You wouldn't think. Brian Guntekunz asked about the Packers hiring Tom Clements at QB coach says it's an example of how Aaron Rodgers has been involved in conversations about things that affect his job. So yes, Rodgers was a part of the decision to hire Clements. I believe Ari Mirov hinted at that earlier and Schneidman is following up with all of what you just basically said there. That'd be quite an interesting situation. <laughs> That'd be quite an interesting situation to do, but there's 17 years of shit potentially. Yeah. How many years? 17, yeah. 17 this will be years. the 18th, I believe. It's crazy. That he, you know, and hopefully. Ty, wait, what did Ty tell him? Ty, you say you're going to nosedive off the roof right. Swan if he doesn't dive. go back? Swan dive, Swan potentially. Dive. No pressure, though. Jason. Oh. He can't have that on his conscience. Right. Especially, well, with, actually his, said especially with where he's at, his, his hand. you know, mind space and love and light. Like, he doesn't want that on his, no. on his head. Like, yeah, you know, like, Ty killed himself. There's a lot of this to Ty all year. Yeah. Ty wouldn't be the only one. Well, I think that's what Aaron knew whenever he heard that. He said, mm -hmm. how about him coming to the realization probably during uh, one of the like, you know, one of those situations in the PK situation? Um, 
where it's like, do you use the bathtub, I guess? Is that what they just had buckets around? No, yeah, a garbage can down there, hold it, and then you just know that like you're going to be butt pissing too, mm -hmm. so you yeah. can't get too far <laughs> forward, you know, because otherwise you're going to have quite the cleanup on your hands. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I've, I've had food poisoning before, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I've Man. had to experience. Oh, yeah, the you know. Yeah, I've had to do it once or twice, but I just uh, uh, shower. You know, you go in, in the shower when you have to. It's, it's mostly been in, like, hotels when I'm away. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, but to sign up for that, I assume they have an entire kit and caboodle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah so definitely. I, I assume there's a poop and puke room. Probably. Yeah. And there's probably bidet. just a poop. Or yeah. just so wait. many bidets. So many bidets. So many bidets. Yeah, because you you're going to get some rubbage if you're using toilet paper. Well, you can't be wiping. Your butthole would be so chapped yeah. that you have Throat to you'd be using a bidet to you know clean yourself up. And I would assume at the level in which he's doing the PK, he, at this point, he probably just has random bidet shooting out of the house. That's why he might have got the house in, in California. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So Natural you, water source. Yeah, you know how those fountains in front of that uh, casino in Vegas? The Bellagio, mm -hmm. yep. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. That's actually what the living room's like in uh, the PK house. Yeah. So you just kind of do your thing, and then you just pop up one of the fountains. Yep. Yeah. Wash your mouth out as well. Yeah, too, exactly. Yeah. Ah, right. Yeah, yep. exactly. right. Listerine everywhere. Yeah, a lot, yes. Mm -hmm. So the whole the floor is actually a bidet. Yeah. Kind of like go. a bathhouse, probably. Boom. I mean, it's but, pretty gross. And you can just lay in the fetal <laughs> oh, position. Really? <laughs> if that's the case. It's pretty cool, though. It's your also. friend, dude. Yeah, it's, it's what's going on, dude. We hate to break it to you. That's just what the hey, I, I told really you I've is. never done the old PK. So uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe someday. I've never seen ever. At what day, what day do you think, at which fountain stop do you think it, like, because he said there was a moment of realization of the ricochet shots that people in his life took, you know, this year because of everything. That was probably a pretty big moment in that entire PK thing. I was, it's, it seemed like when he was talking about it, he was like, man, I didn't even realize like everything everybody had to go through. That was, I don't know when it happened, but I assume that was a pretty real feeling from Aaron in the entire PK process. Yeah, it seems like he's definitely like, he's, he's thinking things through, like every, every angle possible. I guess he's got time right now, the season's over, to kind of digest it and see he, he's, he mentioned multiple times with you, like, man, what a, what a year. Didn't he say that? Like, so much happened over these last, what, eight, ten months? It's crazy. Yeah, and he's hoping for a quieter year in the future, mm -hmm. which would make good, a lot of good, sense. Hopefully. But also, and I said this to him yesterday, and he, he did apologize to us, which was very nice. He's yeah, I Because I did go to a few wars, you know. Yeah, in, in the foxhole all in season. In different countries. You know what I mean? I was, yeah. I was in different Different country. He did apologize, which is very nice uh, of him. Obviously, mm -hmm. we appreciate that. But him coming out in incredible gratitude and being said, "Oh, it's cryptic message," and like everything he does, people basically are going to bury him for. And I, I like the fact that he's almost at the point of like, "Yeah, that's just what my life is now. Like that is just what it is." I don't think he ever wanted to be the person that he ended up having, not having to be, but being this year about the vaccination, non-vaccination thing. But then when he got in there, I think he said yesterday that he wanted to fight for what he, how he felt. And it kind of got all wrapped up in that. It was a wild year and he still won the MVP. And that is something, and he talked about compartmentalizing and how at home being awesome helped him at work while everything else seemed to be going to, you know, absolute hell, it seemed like. Because I was in those, he, he was... Oh, yeah. I mean, it was loud yeah. for a long time. Very. But everybody's saying, well, he's a drama queen. He wanted that. It was like, I don't think he did. I was still standing by the fact that I don't think he wanted to. That's why the immunized thing even happened, because he didn't want to have to fucking become the face of that. But some people are just never going to believe that, I don't think, with him. No, they won't. And, and whatever. That's fine. Everyone can have their opinion. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't think he wanted to be the face of this and face the NFL for whatever is going on with COVID and what he his whole plan was and everything he did. But he he realized, hey, I'm in the middle of it, so he's going to fight. Yeah, and then he does PK cleanse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hits a couple of those fountains. Well, and you got to think that next year will be quieter just because of what the NBA is doing and what Shams told us earlier. What? Well, we beat. What? No, we ended up beating COVID today. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, the whoa, NFL beat COVID a long time ago, remember? Yeah. Yeah. The Super Bowl was in L.A. Nobody's wearing a mask. Uh, well, no much. players Dude. tested positive for the last, like, six weeks. That's so. right. Well, that's because everybody's taking care of themselves so much. Exactly. Bingo. That's Trent right. Dilfer also had that spray. Well, that was a long time ago. That was ago. before Omnicron, no? Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Oh, the spray didn't work on Omnicron? Well, or Delta, I don't think, right? Remember oh, yeah, you're right. The spray yeah, worked that was on the nine, original one iteration, yeah. One Niner was a fucking beast. Oh, yeah. gee. Bro. <laughs> One niner, <laughs> big son of a bitch, bro. <laughs> Shut the world down. Yeah, first yeah. one off the bus. First one off the bus, oh, yeah. and they were a wreck. One niner was a wrecking <laughs> crew. Yeah, thankfully. Then Delta came around, sure. mm -hmm. and then Omicron, mm -hmm. and then allegedly, you know, 
people are telling us on the internet that every time we celebrate COVID being done, a new variant comes literally the next, like within the next week. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And today was the first time we've celebrated COVID being over for like good two or three months at yeah. least. So hopefully that trend doesn't continue because it does feel like we may, may be COVID. If we know anything about the next one, it's going to be weak as shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. All right. Listen, I feel like COVID's going to be in our life forever. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My kids had to be tested twice before we got on the boat and once before we got off the boat. That's because Axel's What happens if you test positive there? Yeah. Once, I'm sorry, sorry. We, we all asked that. I'm, What'd you say? Axel took a dump in the pool? Quarantine. No, uh-huh. he's like licking like street signs and shit when you're Yeah, he did that. Down. Yeah. Handrails, everything. Carpet, he'll lick anything. Exactly. He doesn't care. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, so Tough I wondered, okay, messes. so if one of my kids tests positive the day before we got off the ship, which the kids got tested... What happens then? I'm pretty uh, sure your whole entire floor gets locked down, probably. Well, yeah. not only that, you're probably stuck there, too. You can't yeah. go back for a while. Uh, and then you hop in your 18-wheel truck and you drive somewhere. You know what I mean? Oh, and that's right. Yeah. You park it. That's, a couple months ago, there was a whole outbreak on a cruise ship where they had to stay in the water until everyone passed it. Well, that's... That happened early on, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They weren't letting ships come into port. Yeah. yeah I don't know enough about... Uh, the Canadian situation, but I believe that testing to get back in on the roads and having to go is the reason why the truckers Im- initially got pissed off, right? That would make sense. Having to produce a negative test to get sense. back in to do the whole thing. That's why they initially got pissed off. Imagine if Hawk is stuck on a cruise ship for 12 days. Oh, he- my God. Oh. So <laughs> many people are dead. <laughs> it would have been so awesome. Imagine <laughs> tiny, if- ma- tiny baby room, too. It'd be rough. Oh. Jeez. Well, that trucker thing, isn't that uh, going on here now, too? They're on their way to D.C. right now. Yeah. Are they really? Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. Right, Gump. Hey. Get on the horn, Gump. So what's going hey, By the way, my father was a truck driver. All mm-hmm. right. I have nothing but respect for the amount of hours, Thank loneliness, and, like, how important it is to everything. But what if it, in the – I mean, up there in Canada, there's some real shit going on. Oh, right? yeah. Like the government against the truckers. Mm-hmm. If I know some things about truckers, pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't want to mess. Pretty tough. They will eat li- like sandwiches of punches. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they are not really worried about that type of stuff. And like, but those mounties up there, I think, got their horses on some of these truckers. Well, you, know? you got to be careful because three th- percent of uh, truckers are serial killers as well. Oh, jeez. Right. That that's 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 seems like a high number. Please, Tony. Very high number. It might have been point. These three. are all my dad's friends, dude. What are we? Yeah. Even? I mean, this. On, I am. This is a fact. Oh, oh, it's it's not. Not. Let's yes, get to a break. Truckers dude. are good people. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree. I only said three percent. You ever heard of uh, logistics maybe being the backbone of society? I agree. Oh, yeah. I, I get an Amazon package every day. Hey, they Thank got those you. big prime trucks now, by the way. Oh, yeah. 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 We've watched a lot of serial killer documentaries as an office. I think as a whole, I don't think one of them was oh, about no, truck no, driving. I'll fucking find it, dude. Truck driver, the amount of time you have to dedicate to truck driving. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you have time to def- necessarily just kill people. Now, those lot lizards will get I you. I was going to say, if you got a couple <laughs> free hours, you're looking for a lot uh, lizard. You're not what looking. What is that, guys? Sorry. I don't know what that is. Sorry, sorry. Uh, what's that? That's the prostitutes that bounce around truck stops. You know, oh, hey, okay. what's going on in the cabin? Want to get a little uh, lot lizard in there? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, double L, two, two cabins down. What's going on? <laughs> My, it's three, there's 300 serial killers that are truck drivers, but there's 4 million truck drivers. So it's, oh, uh, so like, this is a Hodge situation. Yeah. Tony. Let's get to a break, Still please. A Let's get to a break. <laughs> I knew three was in there somewhere. I mean, 3%, a lot. Think about the math you just did with 4 million. Yeah. 3% of 4 million. 300 was a lot of. Yeah, but who knows if he is. There's not 300 serial killers in the world right now. Yes, well, that's not is, what stats dude. say. Stats say. How many do you have to kill to be to be considered a serial killer? How many? Six. I don't know. How many people have killed? More than two. Yeah. A few? Probably just, yeah, more two, two, or, two yeah. or more. And they have to be in the same bucket of people, right? Yeah. No. Pat, maybe same pattern as well. Yeah. No, because a serial. Like I the think. wet bandits or the sticky bandits. Like you have your call sign. Is that what it is? Well, I think that's what serial. who murders serial. three or more people. Three or more. It's just any more. any people or the same bucket it, of people. It says usually a service of normal psychology, psychological. So it's yeah, it probably has to be a situation like. A, like yeah, because I think there's a different depiction of the people that just kill yeah. a bunch of people. Exactly. Yeah. I think serial killer is like a uniform spaced yeah, out. Specific. I believe. I think it was Ted Bundy. Yeah, I think Ted, so. Yeah. Well, because it would be what mass murder would hey, be the so, yeah. the distinction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm not 100. I might be wrong no, there. I think you're right. I, okay, good. Then what's a terrorist? Well, then there's an entire. Whoa! 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 What, Connor? 
No, I mean, you know, AJ, it, it's your first day back. We said we were going to be a little less toxic. Yeah, that's right. And PMS Live 2022. Anyways, we hope none of the we hope no more serial killers exist. Yes. yes. No more mass murderers. Right. Yep. No more terrorists. Yep. No more rapists. Yep. Yes. No more pedophiles. Yep. yep. Dentists. No. No. <laughs> we hate dentists. We hate that. De- I hate dentists too. Throw them on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking floss. That's all you got to do. Jesus. Uh, I did not expect that. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> David Moore. Live from the Heartland. We can't play that anymore. Only. <laughs> oh, we got to get to a break, dude. Dentist did not deserve that. No. I don't know. There's a lot of dentists who will try to talk to you and then sh- sh- shut your fucking mouth. I'm trying to work on your mouth. Well, you just asked me a question. What do you want? What do you want? Oh, from you me? don't like the experience. By the way, nobody likes going to a doctor, dude. A doctor never yeah. gets anybody to show up and they're like, hey, I'm in a good mood. I feel good. Like that never happens. I actually just went to the doctor and it was quite delightful. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Did you do a little PK? I swear to God. I didn't do any PK, no, unfortunately. I didn't get any either. Son of a bitch. Uh, we'll be back. Cash app is the easiest way to send, spend, and save your money. That's why they are our official giveaway partner for the 2022 season, AJ. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Cash App is great. Uh, We have a graphic here with the winners of the PMS Cash App end of season wrap up. 13 winners of $10,000 each, chosen by each member of the office. Mm -hmm. I believe we ran it earlier. You are a winner. Congratulations. $130,000 given away to Ryan, Hannah, Lindsey, Frank, Tone. I don't know if that's his real name. Bud Forsyth, why? Dana, Dana Shotzi, uh, Brad Gockley, uh, John Marks, uh, Sammy Carlito, and Ryan. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats, guys. You did it. Uh, if you aren't on Cash App yet, go use code McAfee for $15 as soon as you sign up. That's code McAfee for a free $15. That's a much better deal than what they were trying to sell the last time I had to read this. For sure. Much better. Yeah, you, you donate 10 or 15 or whatever to a charity. Like, all right, I don't know anything about that. Just give people $15 <laughs> yeah. as soon as you sign up with code McAfee at Cash App. Uh, on Cash App, you can buy pieces of any stock with as little as $1. You're getting 15 bucks as soon as you sign up. You can buy Bitcoin one time, daily, weekly, monthly with as little as $1. Download in the App Store or Google Play Store today. If you're not on Cash App, we're, that's where all our giveaways are going to go through because it makes life much easier for the back end CFO, Phil, and Bruce, and everybody because you're just giving them boom, 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 boom. So we're able to give away more shit with Cash App, and uh, life seems to be a lot easier with Cash App. We appreciate the hell out of them, AJ Hawk. Ain't that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad that they stepped in because I know that was a very difficult process oh. trying to give money away. Yeah, there was a lot of extra oh, yeah. added stress that should not have been a part of giving money away. Right. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Were uh, everybody's old tweets vetted? In the <laughs> I, I that is interesting. That is very interesting to think Pretty about much. there. I don't know. It's got to be a service that does that, right? That was a tough. Well, I mean, that, dude, I was on vacation. I come in. Oh, let's just close this thing out and go find me. And then let's go back. Oh, you saw Paul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did not know that, obviously. I am so sorry. I don't know what to do here. Oh, you bowed down like a soft ass big. I'm like, all right. So I'm just trying to do vacation here. I'm so sorry. But that's the world we live in. Congrats mm-hmm. all these winners. There'll be more winners down the road. Also, the $17,000 winner from yesterday. Yeah. Hashtag PMS Live 2022 will be selected today for tomorrow announcement. I can't wait to do more giveaways and more life. We're back in four minutes on the 5-Hour Energy phone line, one 833 4 Hopefully, we'll chat with you. Cheers. It can be done. I mean, we signed Josh Freeman, Josh Freeman and Ryan Lindley, you know, on a brought them in for a Tuesday workout, signed them. They were in the meeting room on Wednesday. Um, you remember, Pat, I told the whole team, I said, hey, just mind your own business. Everybody do your freaking job. Don't watch one snap of either of these guys. Do not watch any of fucking practice. Hold on. No judgment. Trust our coaches. Trust, our, you know, our offensive staff. They'll get these two guys ready to go. And uh, sure enough, we went and beat the Titans, you know, to finish the season eight and eight. It was it was one of the most memorable wins we had, you know, because of how we did it. I think so. And Josh Freeman and Ryan Lindley, obviously incredible people. And they came in and you did say in your Tuesday presser, I've told this story before, where uh, we'll, we'll have a package for Pat McAfee. And I was like, wait a fucking minute. It's the last game of the season. OK, we've lost <laughs> 10 quarterbacks. There's no way I'm dying right now out there. But that was obviously a joke, obviously. Uh, but you bring in Freeman and Lindley, you making the proclamation to the team before they came in. Hey, do not watch. All right. Just don't judge. No judgment. No judgment. Do not watch. And then me and Vinatieri, obviously, immediately upon hearing that, we're like, 
All right, so we got to go fucking watch this guy. And it was <laughs> yeah. bad. That first day of practice was bad. I mean, it was bad, bad. Thursday, you still banging the drum here. Hey, let's not judge. Let's just keep putting in the work. Let's just keep going. It started looking a little bit better. None of us could have expected getting that win on Sunday. What a, You're right. That is a very memorable game, and it's because of the adverse conditions that we're under, you know? Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you guys could have been at the workout on Tuesday, you would have said, no freaking way you signed these two guys. Because you remember Josh Freeman, Josh Freeman had a cannon, right? Yeah. So you know how Frog and T and those guys had set up at the different areas? Like if you're throwing, you know, quick game, you got a quick out or a slant, and then you go, you know, five-step drop, seven-step drop. He didn't complete one pass. He almost <laughs> threw the football. He almost threw the, he, he tore up their hands, number one. Number two, he, he, the balls were bouncing off the indoor, oh, nice. like BBs off a tin can. Almost threw a football through the wall of the indoor facility. <laughs> and then we go, okay, that's good, Josh. Uh, Ryan, you're up. So then we get Ryan in there, right? Ryan's accurate as shit, but he's got zero velocity on the ball, right? It's taking forever. <laughs> and I'm asking T and Frog, because they know our two equipment guys, you know, what do, what do you think? He goes, man, that, that's an easy, easy ball to catch. I mean, it's barely coming in here, Coach. I don't know. If he's going to have to anticipate his throws really well. <laughs> so I'm thinking, holy shit. And I'm like, is there anybody? That's it. You know, Coney Island Thra Josh Freeman was playing for the Coney Island Thrashers at the time, serving, you know, soft serve ice cream at halftime for 250 bucks a game. And, and, and Ryan Lindley... He was driving Uber. He was hanging out in New York City. He was driving Uber at the time. His girlfriend was training for the Olympics, and he was he was listen, in New York City driving, those great driving guys. Uber. Hey, listen, a lot of ricochet unbelievable. shots. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these guys, unbelievable. Hey, the Gabagool on these guys, Coach. Oh. Honestly, they were very good, but they... AJ, you hear that? What's up? This is Kyle Best, dude. Okay. You sound like 20 beats over. Hell yeah. This one's unreal. He's really good at what he does. This is not his full time gig either. No. Ooh. Oh, oh. AJ, do you hear that? Hey, Kyle you Best. Any of the, uh, you watch the Kanye docuseries at all? Uh, so I haven't started that yet. I've heard it's good. I guess Dawn to Two last night was awesome, too. He streamed live on YouTube. He so had a good. full concert. It was awesome. Uh, I saw Steve will do it was there and Kanye was two hours late. Classic. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Classic. You don't say. It's fucking. You, guy, yeah, dude. but you you get tickets to a Kanye concert. You understand? Oh, this thing's mm -hmm. starting after the time in which you're not even allowed to start a concert. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like in Indiana, I think he was four hours late or something like that. He doesn't care. You kidding me? By the way, everybody was still in that goddamn arena whenever he was floating on top of it. Yeah. Walking, oh, walking yeah. around. I, I think he might have taken off from another city when the concert was supposed to start. Don't doubt it. Flew in, landed, had some food. <laughs> Probably did a rehearsal backstage, then one out. It was like 11 or something like that, and fucking smashed until like 1 a.m. Everybody left. It was the greatest concert of all time. I'm like, he, I think you literally waited four hours for that thing. But <sighs> Bunch of marks. The stream is still on YouTube, and there's two and a half hours of nothing on the stream. Yeah, it's a little late, but I mean, it's going, yeah. yeah. It's going, yeah. It was a production. Easy. It was way better than the last one. Yeah. It was it was worth a watch. I got pissed off the audio guy, too, midway. Yeah, I heard he threw his microphone in the water. water. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. That's awesome. Marilyn Manson was there. Again? But mm -hmm. yes, we did watch AJ. I mean, I mean, are you a big Kanye fan? You watching the documentary on him? I mean, I, I've always been like a fan from afar. I've never like dove, dove in completely to Kanye. I definitely like a lot of his music but yeah well, i watched most of the first episode of that docuseries the dude i i respect anybody that is all in and they like whatever they care about whatever they're passionate about like they make no apologies and this guy 
he from a young age he knew like hey I'm doing something and no one's gonna stop me. Yeah, okay. and Skeets on the receiving end of that right now. Oh yeah, you know I what I mean, big time. Skeets, <laughs> I am fascinated by him. Like it would be nice to just yeah. see what he's like. Connie is the most fascinating, one oh, of the most yeah. fascinating humans of all time. And I, you know, watching him and listening to him speak. I appreciate it because he covers all angles when he's talking. And some people will say, you know, you can't keep up or whatever. I, I enjoy it whenever mm -hmm. you hear his brain unload. Not necessarily meaning I agree with everything he does or anything like that, but what a fucking human in history. I yeah. mean, what, what a human in history, Kanye. There was a scene from the Kid Cudi doc where he was talking about something and he basically like finished a sentence halfway through and goes, yeah, no, it's the end of that thought. And then that, that was it for that like section of that question. He, the STEM player is a $200 thing that is a hardware, I guess, like a, yeah. a thing that you can play his entire, you can only play his album on it, and you can raise the levels of like the vocals and the, the music behind it and everything like that. It's like, obviously Kanye is doing that. Like that just is like a classic Kanye thing. Like, oh, this is what everybody's going to do going forward. And it's like, well, that's what old Ye does. You it, can loop stuff and kind of remix your own. Like yeah, it's exactly. actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's wow. very cool. And that's very why cool. people wait four hours at, Concerts, you mm -hmm. know, for him to show up. It's like, mm -hmm. What the fuck is going to happen? We don't know. Yeah, allegedly they've made eight million dollars off those stem players, so they have actually gone a little bit. Eight million is good, mom. Okay. Like, right. let's go to the fans. Let's go to uh, Jiggy in North Carolina. You know, a couple songs we could immediately go to mm -hmm. will resist the urge to get Jiggy with. <laughs> 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 And then you can go north, here, Jiggy, what's up, dude? Not much, brother, not much. Shout out to the Toxic Table, a.k.a. Seth Rogen and Seth McFarlane. Um, <laughs> just want to just wanna say love you, boys. And also, what the fuck's going on? Right? What Connor. going on with the... What, what's going on with the NFL rights, boys? The sooner <laughs> we can get you guys reviewing game film, the sooner that the viewers will stop watching these big networks like ESPN and, and, and not that we got anything wrong with them, but I guarantee no. No. the moment we get you guys some footage to where you can sit there and dissect in, in and out of the huddle, you know, mm. pre-snap, post-snap, what's going on, it's going to be a wrap. Hey, I, Jiggy. Sounds like fun. I concur. Uh, yeah. Everything you're saying, uh, Jiggy, and I believe those conversations are happening. Oh. I think so. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> How's family? How you doing? I want some fucking rights, dude. How do we... The people I believe... Hey. I think we're going to... I think it's going to happen. Like, I, I honestly believe it's going to happen. Isn't that crazy to think, though? Like, just a couple years ago, we are in a basement, obviously. Mm -hmm. Then we go day to day here, and we're on this entire thing. If we're... Those rights are only... You only see them in the mass... If we were... Ah, That'd be awesome, AJ. That'd be so incredible if that was to take place. Imagine, you know, just AJ's breakdown of his NFL throwback clip yesterday that they posted. Yes. AJ, that video hit the internet yesterday, and the NFL wanted to remind people, hey, that man with the home plate face that sits in an attic every single day on the internet was an absolute stone-cold killer. Yeah. Broken hand pick on Ben Roethlisberger. Then you behead Joe Flacco and then pick him off. You were in a set... Let's put this guy in the hall. Come on. In the hall. Now. But us being able to play that right now. Yeah. And AJ so being like, oh, yeah, the guy uh, didn't block me, so I got it. Like, the downplaying every single thing. It would just make everything better, AJ. It would just make everything better. All right. Hey, I was there. I got to watch uh, and observe and, and actually take part in a couple of those meetings you had out there. And you're not lying. Like, you always do say you're up to something. And I think you are up to something that is most likely going to happen. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about it. It's pretty cool. I mean, he did Thank you for deflect, allowing though. me to, to come to magnificent, opulent mansions and sit in on some of these meetings, man. It was it was it was cool to see to see your brain work in those kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is a fascinating thing, and I don't like to, uh, you know, like this Brian Flores thing earlier with the lawyers. You know, I think I get so mad at it because. I've actually, and I don't think a lot of people do it, but I've actually like gone through these contracts myself. Like I would like to know, I want to learn about this type of stuff. Like it's something I'm naturally interested in. They don't want you to. That's the thing though. Lawyers, they don't really want you to understand that, everything that's in there. Bingo. But you, but when I get in those conversations, I am not scared to let them know what I don't know. You know, like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Like I, I, I honestly, it feels like you're trying, I, I don't know what that means. Like 
I feel like when I walk into those meetings and you obviously have got to see a couple now, those people leave it going, I had no idea what that was. Like they have no, like I don't think they've ever encountered somebody like me in these meetings, but I've gotten real comfortable in there. And I think the details are very important. And I think it's like something that maybe the next generation of people kind of feel empowered running their own business. Like, hey, you should know what's going on in these contracts you're signing, what you're worth, what you're not worth. And I've really taken a lot of time to kind of dive into that. It's stressful and I, it's probably gonna be a detriment to our company, but I enjoy those meetings a lot. I enjoy. I love them, actually, AJ. Like I really. I would them. think. I think the the people that you meet with a lot of the times they enjoy it too because it's such a change up from their normal meetings that they have where they talk. The other people talk. Nothing really gets like they talk forever and nothing really is said. And then you shake hands. Oh, cool. We'll see you in the future. And nothing ever happens. Like that's what their normal meeting is when they talk with you. Like you're trying to like, hey, no, let's okay. Yes, we want to do this. How do I get this? How do we do it? I don't care about anything else. Yeah, let's get it done. Right? All right, let's yeah. figure out how we're going to get this. I mean, if we're not, let's not. And I feel yeah. like, you know, people have meetings to have meetings, and they're all on retainer, and they're getting paid for every these meetings. That's why I enjoy going in there. And I've gotten a chance, by the way, and I don't know if people, you know, love this or hate this. Like, I've gotten a chance to ask some very successful business people for advice. You know, like Vince McMahon giving me advice on how I should potentially go. That guy has literally negotiated with everybody on the oh, planet. Yeah. Yeah. Created like me being able to ask those questions is priceless, but I assume I'm much different in there than all the people that I ask for advice from as well. You know, they, at least Vince has a suit on. I go in a fucking tank top. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's get the deal done. Uh, we kind of have to listen to this guy because uh, for some reason people listen to his show. But also, could you not put a jacket on at least for this? Thing? <laughs> Your armpits are out. Well, I apologize. I would love to see some of them try to like, hey man, we gotta, you gotta be cool. We're going to meet with Pat. You know he wears a tank top all the time, and they try to like put on a young hip outfit yeah. or something. I've seen a backwards hat come out mm -hmm. for one. Oh. I, really, I enjoyed that one. It was like a super smoking dope. The dude comes in smoking <laughs> dope already. Uh, I mean, probably get a deal done that way. I'd, yeah, that'd be sweet. probably in our favor. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's operating like I am in that particular front either. All right. <laughs> <laughs> me out eventually and i'm gonna be dead so i understand right. that though i understand that though it's pretty cool yeah it's actually a pretty cool little thing you'll be good i think you thrive you thrive like in chaos with a lot of things happening yeah and also like you know i'll feel like i'll know when it's too much you know like all right maybe somebody else should do a little bit of the talking in this yeah. entire situation and that's been presented to me by a lot of people like don't you think it's probably time to get somebody i'm like i had somebody Lost money in every deal they made. <laughs> so actually, uh, I'm gonna try not. I think you've I think you've proven that you don't need somebody. I don't know, AJ. Some of I these. Mean, things... You have Phil. You have Phil to at least. That that's somebody you absolutely need. Somebody like him. Bro, Phil is awesome in these meetings. Phil is yeah. awesome. Just because he is a CPA and he is a CFO, so some of these nerds I think feel comfortable talking to Phil whenever they get in their little nerd talk. But Phil is a hockey goon. So like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like he has the ability to talk to him. He takes a lot of pride in our company too. Like he takes a lot of pride in our company. I was talking to him last night. He was like, I couldn't imagine going back to like an actual job. Like at this point, I couldn't even imagine with the way we operate. But he is such a good fucking like whenever something gets asked and I'm like, what? and then Phil He's like a father figure. I feel like from just my short time being around Phil, like he's like. Oh, hey, you got a question here? They're, the adult's over there. You can talk to him. <laughs> I think so. That feels like a good move. Stern but fair. Stern but fair. Yeah. Stern, but fair. Is stern but fair. Stern but fair. He cares. I think that's the biggest thing. He, he absolutely 100% cares about you, cares about the company, everyone involved, and he's going to fight for it. So I think that it was awesome to witness that firsthand, actually. We were chatting about, you know, other people – like trying to do it. And by the way, we are nowhere near the first people on the internet, but I think for like former professional athletes, like this is going to become like an avenue because there's gatekeepers that have always been in the media world that pluck people to get on TV. And if they decide whether or not you make it right, like they decide whether or not you have a post playing career or not, Hey, you're either going to be in the media making money or you're going to have to figure out something else. And there's been people that have just kind of done it. So now with social media, obviously I'm not saying anything that everybody else doesn't understand, but a lot of people have told me like, Hey, you're the blueprint now. Everybody's going to do what you do whenever they retire, if they don't get on TV or whatever. I'm like, okay, you're going to have to have a fucking hell of a team around there's you. There's only one of you, by the way, though. There's only one Pat. Like that's the oh, other wow. thing too. People mm -hmm. need to understand.
No, nah, fuck that. There's a lot of me's, but you're like CFO Phil is a massive piece. I just so happen to be best friends with him since kindergarten. And the guy's a CPA who's a goon who I've known forever. The boys here are some of the most talented humans walking this earth. You know, like there is, yes. it is a very difficult thing to do. And I'm very lucky to be a part of it. But our entire business has changed since I've kind of become the only person speaking for it. And I love it. I don't know how long without question. Well, I don't know how long we'll be able to bottle this. I don't know how long this will be able to last, but it is fucking awesome. Just, well, and you also get to hear what these people are saying that usually it'd be like an agent hearing it and then him putting it in different words to kind of spin it one way. Not to mention that that job is just a middleman and they try and get a mass. Like there was a couple people who came in here who were like, okay, we'll <laughs> do this deal for you and we'll take 15%. It's yeah. like, oh, okay, so you're just going to go talk to these people and then you're going to ask for that? Yeah. And it, there was a few of those, you know, there was a few of those conversations and. I, know, I enjoy whenever people think I'm like clearly the dumbest person in the room. You know, I enjoy that a lot. And it's mostly because I wear a tank top and I am a sports stooge, but I've watched enough episodes of Shark Tank. I feel like I can handle myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is such a dumb thing to even think about. But that, you learn a lot about people, you know, whenever you're the dumbest one in the room. And it is. Well, it's dumb fun. people, and not saying you're dumb, but dumb people ask good questions a lot of times that maybe would not be asked by people that think they should be, oh, I'm this intellect. I don't want to ask this basic question. Like, dumb people will ask the question so everyone gets some clarity. I do enjoy the fact that you got a chance to watch me literally ask, like, yeah, I don't know what that means to somebody in the middle of a negotiation when everybody is normally trying to. They don't either, by the way. When you say, I don't know what that means, they don't either. They're oh. just using this stupid mm -hmm. language and these these buzzwords to try to sound smart. Oh, yeah, normally in those conversations, by the way, somebody else is coming back smarter than they are, right? So it's just an, mm -hmm. uh, it's an all-out whatever. I enjoy the, ah, I, you lost me. Right? What does that exactly mean? <laughs> if you could please go ahead and dive into that, it's great. And then listening to them go off script a little bit, to kind of piece it together, it's like, oh, okay, this, this person doesn't know shit about fuck. This, yeah. is, this is awesome all of a sudden. This is a really good time. All right, let's uh, let's keep this thing going here. It's It's been a beautiful time. I'm very lucky to be here. Very lucky and thankful for all of you. It's great to have you back, AJ Hawk. I tell you what, it's good to be back. It felt like we were gone for a month. Yeah. Yeah, that's we talked about that on the internet. Yes. Like an hour's a day, a day's a week, a week's a month, a month's a year. You get it. That is what the internet is because so much happens. We missed you immensely, pal. We were like bummed that you had to be stuck out at sea for another six hours yesterday and we missed you hey i'm glad i'm glad it worked out an old uh old buddy survived his family was still on the boat i guess too they wrote they couldn't didn't have enough room to take him back so they were you know eagerly awaiting getting back to see him was he on a helicopter or a tiny little plane what was it uh i think they honestly tried to helicopter him out of an earlier place in haiti and they couldn't work out airspace or something no joke so that's why we had to go drop at turks and caicos i guess what'd you do to damn him? Yeah, did you? You poisoned him. I didn't him. do anything. You I don't Bob know exactly him off the what ship. happened to him. No, I think Bob and AJ were like, take another shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Come on, OH. <laughs> <laughs> another shot, dude. You guys got this guy all boozed up, man. Hope mm -hmm. he's okay. Hopefully, everybody was wearing their mask above their nose. Yeah. Well, they just changed that actually right before our cruise to where normally you had to wear it the whole time if you're indoors. And then they took that away, I think, a couple of days before the cruise. Did you hear about the flight attendant yesterday or on my flight back from Hawaii? The person who saved somebody? Well, Commander that was A. Commander A. Yeah, <laughs> Commander A. Respect. That guy's awesome, by the way. That guy's absolutely awesome. Uh, shout out to Commander A for saving a life on a plane. No, the lady who woke me up in the middle of my sleep, she woke me up in the middle. I was in Put a your mask up? Yeah, my mask had fallen below my nose. So, you know, I was like, excuse me. So I moved it up and we went about our business, but she saved she saved so many lives. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone on that plane. Thousands. Thank you to that lady. Dude, I was obviously, you know, I view everything as a story. Like, literally, I view everything as a story and everything as a movie. And it's just like, I think growing up as a WWE fan, that's just kind of how, you know, you kind of view the world. But a after I had some recollection on what had just happened with that flight, attendant, I'm like, oh, my God, that has to end terribly sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I assume there are some people that, you know, Granted, you're grumpy, you're on a plane, you're also sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you're waking up somebody in the middle of sleeping and say, hey, can you move that thing, you know, half an inch or whatever. Now, I understand it's protocol and safe. She's just doing her job. But I'm like, holy shit. How many times in the last year right. and a half has that ended much differently than me going, that's hilarious. And then <laughs> just going off. You know, like, I assume that happens. And I'm, 
you know, maybe we're getting to the point where that won't be the case anymore, but it's hard times on It's been tough for everybody, including that lady. I assume she's had a lot of altercations. Yeah, a lot of I want to shake his hand situations <laughs> with that lady where people are standing up not happy. Probably getting thrown off the plate. I started clapping for that commander. Ain't nobody else clapping. What the hell? Nobody? And there was like a couple, like, I think my wife got involved on the clap, and then there was like a younger person over here. Everybody kind of had their headphones on, didn't really. Just locked I, in. Did he do like chest compressions? What did he do? I don't know. I couldn't see it because it was 50B. It was on the back, and there was two aisles. So my wife was able to lean out and see down the aisle to see it, but it was on the opposite side of the plane as me, so I couldn't see what it was. But yeah, I think at one point, I mean, I think the guy was dead. Like I, I, I do believe he was potentially dead, and then he kind of brought because the wife, I guess, was being consoled and crying, and then Jeez. the fire trucks and the ambulances flanking our plane. On it was a fucking wild yeah. scene, and then the guy inevitably because it was like a ten minute mm -hmm. drive back to the thing. So there's a lot. That's a lot of time. The I taxi. think. Yeah. The taxiing yeah. back. That's a lot of time. So by the time we got back, the guy was like kind of walked off. He was like kind of helped. He walked off himself and the wife walked off. And then when that doctor just kind of just walked back and sat down and nobody said anything, I'm like, what the fuck? Did he give a thumbs up when he was walking off the plane? Yeah, like a play athlete. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I don't think he did. He fixed his mask though because he had a big beard. Oh. And he was walking off. Did the did she say it to him as they were wheeling him out? Get that fucking mask over your nose. I don't know. I don't know who said it, but he was he was being very considerate. The guy, he, I'm happy he survived, but this dude, fucking. If it would have happened when you're going to Hawaii, probably much more receptive from the people on the plane. They're very yeah. excited. Yeah. They probably cheer, round of applause. Well. Leaving uh, Hawaii is probably like you know, scrape the body off. Let's go. Let's and it was a, a red eye. It was going over. Jeez, Nick. Nobody was like that. All right. <laughs> Sounded like it. They were all. A couple. A lot of people are confused. We we're clear for takeoff. Yeah. We're on the. We're literally taking off, and then all of a sudden, whoa. people probably thought like someone, like a terrorist, didn't they? I mean, there was a lot of like what, what, a lot of confusion. After. I'm trying to get back home from somewhere. I'm with Nick. That guy better be fucking dead. Okay. I'm not saying that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> think Tony stands alone on this. Shit. I'm just saying I could see people feel that <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. This guy's making us go all the way back to the gate. Another hour. I think he was. By the way, I think like that is. Well, something. yeah, your, his situation. He was fine. He passed the test. What a human you are, by the way. Jeez Louise. He's leaning over to the guy next to him. This guy better be fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll go back there and kill him myself. Yeah. I would imagine Diggs, uh, Diggs said if he was on his way home and that happened, I would imagine on the way to Hawaii, Diggs, you'd be even more upset because it'd be cutting into your vacation. No, that's fine because you're going on vacation. You're happy. But like, by the time you're ready to come home, I'm ready to get the fuck home. Please. Well, it's fascinating. I don't know. I didn't ever what even thought What if that's you? That. Hopefully you don't have a, an incident. I've been there. Trust Diggs. me. I've been there and I didn't ring that fucking bell. I fucking sucked it up. <laughs> 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 Tony, Tony, this man died. He's a fine plane. now, okay? We don't know. There's no follow up. All right, I don't know the person's name. Head, he's fine. If Commander we A, he's fine. If Commander A got to him, he's okay. It is crazy to think about, though. Just the amount of shit that I was on, too. Like sleeping pills, you know, for the seven and a half hour flight. And I'm just saying, like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. And then I turn in fucking Commander A with a shark tooth necklace. Fucking shit. And then he's off. And he goes, it was, I was mind blown, man. I was like, why is this happen? What? I happen to be in those situations on a regular basis, by the way. Just like the dumbest of all time. What is going on? Why does this happen? I have no idea. But shout out to Commander and superheroes that walk amongst us. Yeah. First responders, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a big plane, but kind of a shot in the dark. Like, are there any doctors on here? Because if there aren't, this man is dead. Yeah. Yeah, is there any doctors or medical professionals on this plane? Yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is out of the movies right now. They're trying to say it happens 44,000 people a year. So the lady that was with Commander A that I did not see because the way my pod was set up and I was looking this way because it was on that side, she was with him. She said this happens, and I believe she was a medical professional as well. I don't know if she was a doctor or what she was. She was with him, so she went back there with him, and she said it happens more often than you think. I did not see her, though, because the way... I was potted, but she said, yeah, on the way out here, it happened. Yeah, I was going to say, well, with 44,000 people a year, th what's the denominator on how many flights Hi. there oh, are? Hi. Hi. Do you remember? Just because. That it happened to us. I, I can't remember where we were going, but we were on a flight to New York. It happened in the aisle I was in, and the man, two seats over from me, uh, I think it ended up being like his blood sugar, and he oh. passed out. Oh, yes. And his wife couldn't wake him up, and a nurse had to come up and run up, and then I was like <laughs> caught awkwardly in the middle trying to get out of the way, and. Yeah, dude, it is. Give him some Skittles. Well, because nice you're place. in a, you're in a, what? You're in the sky there in a cylinder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
There is not. I mean, you are screwed. I mean, they'll tell you how to put like a mask on, an oxygen mask, and your seatbelt on. But what happens if my heart stops? Do we got any? Uh, we got anything? And I, I, the marshal was also back there, right? Because there's a marshal mm, on every yep, plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe there's a marshal. Yeah, you're not allowed to out the marshal though. No. But it seemed like a random person was not associated with the group, was with the group, and then left the plane with said group. Okay. Oh, there's the marshal. There's the marshal. That feels like that's probably the fire marshal yeah, right there. there. You're you not, see him? You're not allowed to tell me Did that. somebody replace him then, or do you just have no marshal then? I think with that big of a plane, maybe two? Yeah, probably a couple. Yeah, it's like a soccer uh, game. Like when the captain goes off, you just like just take the band hands. off and you give it to someone. <laughs> yeah, well, why do they do that? Because there's a new captain, captain to talk yeah. to the ref on the field, dude. Come Bingo. on. Captain has to be on the okay. field. All right, th thank you for clearing that up. I didn't know. Ted well, we're a big pitch show, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Air marshal would stink as a job, dude. Flying around all day. Yeah, and you probably can't sleep either. You're not no. supposed to sleep. Well, that's what I was talking about with Commander A. Like, I was on, you know, vitamins. He probably was too, though. Well, but he was fucking boom. Yeah. Up and yeah. What if he's not? What if that dude, his headphones are on? And he's, well, I guess they cut it. Blacked out drunk already. Yeah, or he's hammered. Yeah. Yeah, well, I assume doctor and all. Well, but who knows? Like, he's not on call. He can do whatever he wants. Like, for to Tony's point, if they were going to Hawaii, Commander A's probably already Hammered. getting a little boozed up, you know, excited about the trip. And all of a sudden, he's got to snap out of it. Oh, I mean, he can start a man's life. heart on fucking six rum and cokes, though, no problem. I, if I know <laughs> Commander A. Shark tooth you know. necklace. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. <laughs> it was a movie, though, man. Happy everybody survived. Let's get to one more phone call here on the 5 Energy phone line. Go to 5 Use promo code McAfee to receive 10% off your order at 5 Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm on keto. Can you notice? Are you, Are you really? Yeah, you look great. Thank you. That's tan, actually. I'm still fat. When did you uh, <laughs> When did you start? Yesterday. So it's all right. Ketosis is starting to kick in probably tonight around 8 p.m. Do you ever test yourself? What's that mean? Pee on stick. You're supposed to, like, there's, like, strips where you test yourself to see if you're in ketosis. No, I test myself with cookies staring at me. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it. Discipline. My wife, you know, has these keto cookies that she's put together, two and a half grams of carbs per cookie. And I have a massive sweet tooth, so at the end of the night, that I have, like, three of those. And that's kind of how it nice. all is wraps up it's a good it's great it's a great little so you can eat though but now you eat all day right you don't fast anymore do you uh you know that's an interesting thing because i'm trying to yeah i don't know because if i fast and keto i'm probably what ripped in yeah. tomorrow yeah probably yeah <laughs> you should see if you can fast on keto because i mean brock doesn't brock only does the keto he doesn't do intermittent fasting yeah right? he did eight years of keto. eight years of keto that guy hasn't had, he's probably had a couple of cheat days i guess i don't know he might not What's the rock eating all that fucking French toast still looking like he looks like? Wow. Well, well, he's not eating cheat, that. Cheat day. Cheat day. It looks yeah. so good. He is eating that French yeah, toast. He, he loves it. It has coconut um, uh, shell. I bought some. Mana. Yeah, but usually when, like, if you're having a cheat day, I get it. But you're not eating three whole loaves of bread worth of French toast and then, you know, going into 400 pieces of sushi afterward. Can we please put a picture up on the rock from the do. Super Bowl? From the Super Bowl? Please put a picture up. The microphone looked like uh, mm -hmm. this five-hour energy thing in his mm -hmm. hand. Okay, this is literally what a full microphone looked like. That dude can eat seven pieces, yeah. loaves of French yes. toast. That guy is not eating French toast. Look yes. how big that fucking guy is. That's dude. what I'm saying. He is eating fucking, you know, squid out of like a little pack. I don't know what this guy's eating, Sweet but I meat. guarantee he's not eating French toast. I seen him. He posted it. He eats it. Yeah. And ooze juice. Ooze juice. Yeah. Lots of ooze juice. Or regular Sandwiches. juice. Sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. No. It's working, whatever it is. It is. Hey, Jake, could you imagine looking like that? No, and, he, and the thing is, he's looked better and better since he kind of got out of wrestling, I feel like, too. Like, he's gotten bigger and more ripped. Well, there's an entire story that when he, went, he posts about it. When he went to Hollywood, they told him to slim down, basically. You need to, you know, buy into the actor's build and the role and everything like that. Then he ends up going back to WWE. He was Hollywood Rock at the time. He was much smaller. And then he made a decision to be himself and just become an absolute monster, and he's become the biggest star on Earth. So that's an entire – his body transformation is an entire thing, you know? But God damn. He has a 32-inch waist or something like that. Yeah, now with, like, these superhero movies, like, the one that he's going in, Black Adam's going to be unbelievable, and he'll probably be able to play that role, like John Cena was saying, for five to ten years, filming stuff. He's eating that how old is stuff. How old is Dwayne now? He's got to be, what, close to 50? Jeez. 47. I'm sure, he, I'm sure if he goes back to a high school reunion, all his buddies look just like him. Hey, speaking of high school reunions, did you see that show? 49. On? He's 49, 49 years old. Wow. What's that show? Um, I watched it. It's about mystery. Franco's in it. 
Oh, search party. Search is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. After party. After party. Search party. S party. Something. Party. Oh, on uh, on Apple TV. Yeah, yeah it's about yeah. a high school reunion, and then people somebody ends up dead. Oh no. Yeah, guy ends up dead, and then it's an is entire. It good? Yes, I enjoyed it actually. I enjoy. I, I, Classic. I, who's done it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few new shows. Severance. I heard was very good. It's who? With, uh, it's called Severance. I believe it's about some guy who gets fired. It's uh, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley's brother from Step Brothers. Adam Scott, that guy. Oh, the with kick drum. Yep, yep. Uh huh. And then uh, <laughs> Come on, no. it's not. No. It's not him. No, no, no. no it's the, the break up. They hate Derek. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, he's in the car with the Catalina Wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the real thing. Hasn't had a the, car uh -huh. since 2004. Uh, like okay, the and then uh, uh, the shake and bake guy's fucking his wife. Yes, exactly. Want to roll you up in a ball? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there's another show. It's about like. Uh, Bunch of people who get framed for kidnapping, like the uh, prime minister's son or something. What's oh. it called? Oh, I don't know. I haven't clicked on it yet, but it looks very good in the reviews. All are this good. is in Apple. All this are yeah, it's all in Apple. Hey, Apple's making a play. Yeah, they know. Are they going to get into sports? You think Apple going to get into sports? Yeah, they're doing everything. You think so? John Hamm actually made that sweet commercial for Apple that TV. That was a good app. That was a good commercial. Oh, Hamm, you can see him tonight, nine o'clock, eight thirty. Eight thirty. <laughs> 8.30. 8.30 Eastern, That's Hockey Talk. YouTube.com forward yeah. slash That's Hockey Talk. Does anyone else call him Hamaconda? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Oh, yeah. All his close friends. Everybody. <laughs> the Hammer, dude. He's on tonight. I watched, um, what's the show again that he was big on? Mad Men, yeah. I watched Mad Men a couple years ago. Like, it took me a long time, and I watched through it after it was already on the air, off the air for a long time. The show is very good, man. John Hamm is a great actor. Yeah, before Cowboy Town, I mean, he was uh, ad sales 50s Don Draper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was all of Pittsburgh got trapped basically by Mad Men. There was like speakeasies popping up in Pittsburgh. Ooh. I go back, they all have their hair slicked straight back. They all have the same exact cut. Smoking cigs. I'm like, what is going on? Or Tony like, actually had a, an apartment in the city and then a family out in the suburbs he would take care of, a side family. It was wild. <laughs> it was sweet. It was cool. It was a cool time. It was cool. I remember traveling back home and everybody's, oh. The fuck is going on? Everybody's drinking old fashions. There's newspapers on the windows all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is going on? I already had that though because I had the guma from when I watched Sopranos. So that was just an easy <laughs> transition. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's get out of here. Side gabagool. Back in uh, about 19 hours, 45 minutes. Hell yeah. We got a big time show coming tomorrow, don't we? Oh, Hell yeah. Huge. Oh, huge. Tomorrow's Thursday, right? Yeah. 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 Huge. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you eat when you're doing keto? Like, what's a what's a normal lunch for you? Steaks. What? Brock Lesnar. What? 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 Burgers. What? what? Eggs. What? what? And those keto cookies, dude. Uh, right that's what I mean. Nice. I like that Brock talked about that. He has that... Uh, Whatever that mix he has with the bearded butchers, that legit popped up on my YouTube feed so a couple good. months ago. All of a sudden, Brock in there just, you know, taking down a whole cow, and he's he's so intrigued by how they do it all. Like he is he is all in on that whole deal. Yeah, oh yeah, he has he started his own butcher shop up there. I in, have I have a lot of those their spices. Well, this one's the best. It's yes. so good. I know. I've already ordered it. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah, because I tell you, I have two or three of the other spices that those bearded butchers guys. Use they they've caught me man their YouTube page got me hooked. Wow yeah. they got good beards they're yeah. the bearded butchers. Oh yeah they Those got like, nets they though. put over their beards when they're working with the animal stuff. You know when they're cutting them up. Smart. Oh, that's because yeah. uh, HIPAA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hip. Don't want to mess up all the meat. What's mm. the kitchen compliance shit? There's something. OSHA. Got it. There it is. The FDA. I thought OSHA's not the kitchen. <laughs> no, it is. You, you look too. deep enough, you'll find it in there. <laughs> <laughs> we all get it. All right, we're back tomorrow. Pfizer. Uh, okay, come pal. on, AJ. Oh, there goes his list. There you go. Here we go. You've been cooking yeah. on these with Carpenter out on the cruise, pal. What else you need? Let's go, dude. You've been cooking nope. these up with Carpenter out on the cult cruise, pal. Jeez, there you always. go, Look at Bob. What is this? A, hey, we're going bow hunting on a boat day. They had a, there was a, a fashion show and Rocky Boots was the sponsor, so it gave him a bunch of clothes and boots for people to wear. Hey, by the way, what, these were the boots that he was selling me whenever I was out there at your cult party, right? Probably, yeah. He loves them. They're very comfortable. You're <laughs> agile. <laughs> hostile. Listen, they are. They're great boots, right? These are great active boots, right? Oh, yeah. They're not cheap. Yeah. And they, yeah, they, they're a big sponsor of the cruise. And yeah, they sponsor the whole fashion show. Bobby took like four gigantic Rocky Boots bags back with him through the airport. And he's not real happy about carrying them. <laughs> they steal tell or? 
No, they're I like think active. So. I, okay. They probably have a steel toe, but I think they are. Okay. They really? so they're not red wing then. No, well, that, it activates <laughs> when something drops on you. Here we go. There it is. Oh man, he looks awesome. <laughs> that sweet, I love that guy. <laughs> oh, I love that man. <laughs> was what he is... just yelling "Ura" on people's faces <laughs> all day wearing that? Barking. I mean, well, so where they showed Bob? He has there. He, go, he has that jacket on with shirtless, but he for the like twenty minutes before that. He had his full camo stuff on. I could see he was getting all warm. He was like, oh, it was a perfect opportunity. And he had no shirt on. Now I think they maybe want him to at least showcase the jacket a little bit. So he put it on with no shirt underneath. Hey, but he was sober in that one right there. It looked like he was drinking water while he's going through this. Super, yeah. Super sober, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love that guy. Yeah, weapon. All right, we're back tomorrow. AJ, what do you, uh, what do you want to talk about tomorrow, dude? Maybe something will happen. Yeah, stuff's going to happen. What, someone, people are going to get tagged, right, Boom. at some point here? Yes. Boom. J.C. Jackson. Also, Bill Belichick was at a fundraiser. I'm raising money for kids. He was. Oh, yeah. For his foundation. Like that. Yeah. So, sorry, J.C. Just trying to take care of the community. I saw he took a good knee in that photo. Yeah. In a suit. Good mm-hmm. power knee in a mm-hmm. suit. You don't care. That was a good photo by Bill Belichick. Uh, last phone call here. Let's go to Mike in Arizona. Mike, what's going on? Hey, dude, boys. How we doing? Okay, man. Uh, on the desert, good city. All right, what's going on? Called when uh, Sean was on the phone. I'm tired of everybody treating the Suns as a throwaway team. They're the best fucking team in the league. Okay. They're ready to put LeBron, put LeBron's career to an end. So Americans finally start debating about the next go conversation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. There you have it. Thank you, Mike. Dan Marley, Dan Marley coming back? They do have, <laughs> they do have the best uh, record in the league. I believe Dan, Chuck, what? Steve, what? Yep. all of these Amari, sons greats. Uh-huh. Sean Marion. Does, does, Mary. does, um, does their mascot still dunk off the trampoline? Yes, Crunch still Every does mascot? That. Oh, the son's mascot. Yeah. Every no, mascot that dude do that. The, he, in the gorilla suit no, was yeah, doing some sweet dunks back in the day. All right, Boomer here for the Pacers. I put him mm-hmm. up against anybody. Lucky. Oh, Benny the Bull. Take Even all those Benny guys. the oh, fucking no. Bull. Lucky we Benny the Bull baseballs. fucking stuffs him at the rim every time. Well, Boomer <laughs> was doing handstands upside down in the suit, ju- doing press-ups like this, <laughs> and then hopping on a trampoline and doing reverse dunks in front of everybody. Never missed. Never wow. flub. Fucking send it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky the Leprechaun would smoke. Who? Who? Like, nobody even knows Lucky the Leprechaun exists. And that's because he's a ghost. Not many people believe in Leprechauns, and he seems to if pop If you believe in the Leprechaun, say yeah. yeah! Yeah! We've all seen it. All right. See you tomorrow. AJ, uh, great having you back. Good to be back. Good to, good to see you guys, man. It's been a while. Hammered downs in 15 minutes. Hockey talks tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. That's a Wednesday. Let's get wild Wednesday, February 23rd. Cheers.